A return to glory for the University of Georgia. After six years of waiting, the dogs are back in the top ten. The pride in the red and black hasn't run this high since the days when Vince Dooley was carried to national championship glory. And Herschel Walker ran wild between these very hedges. Robert Edwards now runs with the same swiftness and power. And Heinz Ward, who has seen it all in his four years in Athens, sees nothing less than a November march to an even higher destination. the longest running rivalry in the South. It's the meeting between 16th ranked Auburn and the 7th ranked Georgia Bulldogs. Tonight, between the Hedges in Athens, Georgia, the oldest rivalry in the South. It's the 101st meeting between the Auburn Tigers and the Georgia Bulldogs. Let's go back one full year. 365 days ago, it took four overtime periods to decide this one. Craig is stopped on a fourth down play, and the Georgia Bulldogs have won it by a final score of 56 to 49, setting off a gigantic celebration. And when you talk to the seniors, particularly here at Georgia, they say that is the football game that vaulted them into what they have done this season with an eight and one record hi everybody ron franklin welcome once again to espn saturday night primetime college football and for the first time in a very long time the meeting between auburn and georgia has got a lot on the line first of all for georgia they want to win out they want to have 10 and one as their record and a shot as an alliance team and as far as auburn is concerned well they control their own destiny they want to continue to win wind up in atlanta and face off against the eastern division champion at a shot at the sec championship mike godfrey joins me on the telecast as usual and mike High stakes is what you would have to say about this year's meeting between Auburn and Georgia. Ron, Terry Bowden has gambled this year on his passing game, feeling it, that it would carry his offensive football team. Lat two weeks ago, they lost to Mississippi State, got shut out. They've had two weeks to prepare for this ball game, and I really look forward to them to get the ball to Fred Beasley tonight, the former tailback fullback in a one-back set, and try to run the football with Fred Beasley. Mike, when I look at the University of Georgia, the greatest difference that I can see this year is quarterback Mike Bobo. Last year, he and his coach did not seem to be on the same page. That's not the case this season. No, and talking to Mike Bobo the other day at practice, he said, you know, I just didn't understand the offense last year. And he said, this year, I understand it. It's, it's coming more easily to me. And he's playing within the system, and his numbers reflect that. He's got five interceptions this year as opposed to 16 last year, throwing for about 64% completions. And he's using his other weapons. Heinz Ward and Robert Edwards. Go down to the sideline to check with the third member of our telecast team. Here's Adrian Karsten. Adrian? Ron, thanks very much. You know, it really is Jim Donnan's offensive creativity that has Heinz Ward lining up tonight as perhaps the most versatile player in college football. Ward the quarterback, slash running back, slash wide receiver, slash kickoff returner. He's going to be slashing all over this field tonight. And the ironic thing is, Ron, that he may be most dangerous when he doesn't have the ball in his hands when he's used as a decoy because it's then when the defensive eyes of Auburn are on him that they'll throw or pass off to someone else. He's a lot of fun to watch tonight, Ron. Ugga. Well, Ugga can see his breath tonight. It is very cool. We'll give you those weather conditions in just a moment. Supposed to be down into the 20s by the time this ball game is over tonight. And extremely windy conditions. As Jared Holmes has the ball teed up, and here is the opening kickoff, and this is going to be about nine yards deep, in fact, out of the back of the end zone, and Georgia will scrimmage at the 20-yard line. So let's take a look at the starters. Mike Bobo, of course, will go at quarterback, and he will have behind him Robert Edwards, the Rocket Man. Patrick Pass, also number six. 
The receiver's Heinz Ward. He does everything, as Adrian said. Corey Allen, an outstanding senior. Larry Brown, the tight end. And up uh, front on the offensive line, well, the bell cow here, Matt Stenchcomb. He was on the right side. They moved him to the left side. Chris Terry, also a great job at right tackle. Georgia at the line, and they're going to snap the football. And Auburn had to get set quickly as the pitch goes to Edwards. Gets a block. Spikes is there. And Ty Kale Spikes will take him down and knock him for a loss on the very first play. And Georgia with a player down at the 24-yard line. And that's Hines Ward, who was injured on the very first play of this football game. Ron, Georgia came out. They ran out to the field, tried to snap the ball quick to try to catch Auburn, who's a very complex defensive, uh, uh, does a lot of things on defense, trying to catch him sleeping a little bit on the first play. Jim Donnan looks on very concerned, obviously, because of his multi-purpose guy, Hines Ward, going down on the very first play. And, Mike, they're helping him off the field. And then just looking at him, he just had his bell rung. I think he got a knee in the helmet. You're going to see him crack back right here. This is him right here. And it looks like his knee, the knee of the defensive player hit him in the helmet. That's exactly right. And you can see he goes down at the 24-yard line. Now, the question is for the trainers and also for the doctor to look him over and make sure that he is okay to come back into this football game. And meanwhile, Auburn with an injured player as well, just over on the sideline, and it looks like it's Jimmy Brumbaugh. So two key players for both football teams injured on the opening play from scrimmage. It's interesting because Jimmy Brim Brumball talking the other day said that Heinz Ward was the best player in the SEC. Both of them go out with an injury on the first play. Boy, this is indeed tough sledding for both football teams, particularly if both cannot come back into the contest. Brumbaugh, an inside man. They moved him to defensive end this year, and he's been outstanding. And his knee was the knee that hit Heinz Ward's helmet. Second down and 15 for the Bulldogs. They scrimmage from just across their own 14-yard line. Bobo to throw on second down screen right here in the flat. Edwards, 20, 25, out to the 30. First and 10 Georgia Bulldogs. When they get him the football in the open field, 18 yards there, and he is as fluid as anyone you'll see in college football. Brumbaugh, Dorsey, and Carson is how they were set to start tonight, and we'll check and see exactly what happens as far as the replacement for him. Reese, Neal, Spikes, and Taylor, very active linebacker group for Auburn. And in the secondary, those corners have been picked on a little bit. Nolan and also Larry Kasher. They've got to step up big tonight. Jeff Dunlap is the man, number 76, who has come in at left defensive end for Brumbaugh. Barely got it away. Edwards at the middle. Has five. Has ten. Cut it off at 15 yards. They're going to spot it officially at 14, but Robert Edwards on back-to-back -back plays electrifies this crowd, and there was a flag down. And it was thrown at the end of the play. Doyle Jackson, the referee tonight. They're going to pick it up, Ron. We have an inadvertent flag, no flag on the play. Ron, the key for Georgia tonight is to control the safeties. Brad Ware, Rob Pate, or Martavius Houston, who's ever in there, those two safeties for Auburn will be trying to stop Robert Edwards sneaking up to try to help against the run. You can see Callaway coming up to check on the signal count. He's out front blocking as Edwards puts a head down. He'll be close to the 50-yard line as Ricky Neal, the senior out of Daytona, Florida, comes over to make the tackle. And the numbers on Edwards averaging almost seven yards a carry. Well, he's, been a, he's been an outstanding tailback here. Just hasn't been able to stay healthy. Talking to Jim Donnan the other day, he said it's imperative for Georgia to get off to a quick start tonight. They want to score first, score a couple times, and force Auburn not to run the football and try to throw the football to beat him. Three carries now for Robert Edwards, 13 yards. Remember, he lost yardage on the first play. But now on the positive side is Bobo with an audible at the line of scrimmage. 
Play clock is down to three. He sets in the pocket. And back over the middle. Has it complete. Greer all the way down to the 10-yard line. Kasher makes the tackle. 41 yards. And you see Mike Bobo go right in front of the bench, make the motion of exuberance because as we talked about it early in this broadcast, he is at home with this system this year. Jim Donnan calls the plays. He perfects him. Michael Greer on the reception on a dig route, which is over the middle. Larry Kasher on the tackle. The ball squarely at the 10-yard line. So it is a first down, and from where the ball is spotted, it is goal to go. Robert Edwards, three yards, and then is upended as Martavius Houston, number 25, comes up out of the secondary to make the hit on him. That's, again, that's the safeties of our Auburn. They'll stick their nose right up there to try to get the seventh, eighth guy in the box. And Georgia, with that pass over the middle of Michael Greer, will try to hold them back so that they don't get involved in the running game. A lot of success inside the 20. Almost 78% on the season. Stafford out over the football. From the seven and a half yard line. Edwards again, right up the middle. Inside the five, and he's down to the four. Spikes is there to make the tackle. And a huge down as far as Auburn is concerned because they can make a big statement if they force them to go for a field goal here. Not a bad sign for Auburn here early in the ball game. Now, this is just the first drive at Georgia's offensive line knocking. The Auburn defensive front off the ball. They are having their way in the running game here on this first drive. And as you can see, averaging over 10 yards per play. Auburn, now, Auburn got caught. He got caught substituting. Shell the timeout on the field. No score. We will be back for this third down play right after this. ESPN's presentation of college football, Auburn versus Georgia, is brought to you by Maximum Television, only from Sony. And by National Car Rental. So what are you waiting for? Let's go. Well, some of the uh, faithful, and I'm in a packed house tonight, talking to Tony Barnhart, who's here covering the ball game for the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, of course, does work for ESPN, and he said he walked through the... Uh, the school today, the grounds, and talked with some of the tailgaters and everything. He said it hasn't been like this, this kind of attitude on campus since way back in the early 80s. These folks are really pumped. Third down. Looks like Auburn's going to try to blitz them. Here they come, the pass. Caught for the touchdown. Corey Allen. What a dream for Corey Allen. One of the big ovations he received just a moment ago as the seniors were introduced individually before this 80,000-plus throng of folks at Stanford Stadium. And he catches the first touchdown pass of the night. Half Hines with the extra point attempt. He's got it. And with 10 minutes, 50 seconds left to play in the opening quarter, a very convincing opening drive by these Georgia Bulldogs to go on top 7-0. Bulldog. Fingers high in the air. His club is on top. This is Marquis Cooper. Cooper, 30, 35, and out to the 37-yard line. And let's check in with Adrian Karsten. Adrian? Ron, right before the commercial break, I was told by the medical staff at Georgia there's a 50-50 chance that Heinz Ward is going to re, uh, be replaced back in this game or will return. That shot that he took to the back of the head by Brumbaugh, who has now left the stadium on a stretcher going into the locker room, left him very unbalanced. The neurosurgeons checked out his mobility, but he was not able to stand up and move around very freely on his own. He can walk around, but he cannot jog and certainly not can, uh, cannot run. So the more time that passes, the better off you will be. But it's a wait and see of position right now. Okay, Adrian, we'll continue to check in with you on uh, the condition of Heinz Ward. And also we'll see what we can find out more about Jimmy Brumbaugh. That didn't look good when they rolled him off the field. 
first. Throws his first pass complete to Gibson. And Champ Bailey hits him and pushes him back beyond the line of scrimmage as we take a look at the starters for the Tigers from Auburn. And Craig, of course, at quarterback. Demontre Carter and Fred Beasley, the running backs. The receivers, one of those you just saw. Goodson, along with Karsten Bailey, and Kevin McLeod is the tight end. And the offensive line, they got some work to do here tonight. Victor Riley probably, if you said that someone was the bell cow of this group, he certainly would be. A big senior out of South Carolina. 6'5", 313 pounds. Good look at Damian Craig. You, we saw him earlier in an upset win at LSU at a very big ball game of the Southeastern Conference race. This is Beasley. Crosses the 40, down to the 43, or up to the 43, I should say, as Grant is there to make the tackle. And let's look at the starters for the Bulldogs from Georgia. Snelling, Stroud, and Derek Bird, the down three. The linebackers, active group here, particularly Tolbert and Greg Bright. And in the secondary, well, the guy who gets them lined up is Trey Seip, another one of the seniors. And the Bailey brothers, Champ and Ronald, at the two corners, both from Folkestone, Georgia. Jim Donnan. Third down. Line to make is the 48. Craig gets outside the box, gets his pass away, and throws it complete for the first down across midfield. That's Hicks Poor on the receiving end. A nice job by, excuse me, Ron, nice job by Auburn blocking scheme to get Damien Craig outside. Everybody tries to keep him inside, but you'll see this blocking scheme right here by Fred Beasley to try to get him on the corner where he can throw the football to Hicks poor. Nice move by Terry Bowden and Rodney Allison, the offensive coordinator. It was Brandon Tolbert that got hooked inside. Craig is two of two for 10 yards. As you look at his numbers, 15 touchdowns, but 11 picks. Four of those against Mississippi State. Beasley off the left side, gonna go for very short yardage. But Mike, I think for the Tiger fans watching at home, it may look as though it's kind of boring, but I think they're going to have to do a bunch of that just to keep Georgia honest tonight, don't you? They really do. Uh, Fred Beasley had a one-on-one -on -one meeting with Rodney Allison, the offensive coordinator in the Mississippi State game. He had six yards on four carries, and he said we haven't run the ball enough to know if we can run the ball. He's not being selfish. He just wants to be a leader, and you can see they rank 109th in Division One out of 112 running the football. Brad a senior out of Montgomery, 6'2", 225. The lone setback again. They fake it to him, and now Craig on the roll. Gets his pass, has it complete, and that's Eric Lowe with the first down. Lost the ball, but he lost it out of bounds. Ron, just like you mentioned, though, that running play a play ago wasn't that marvelous a play, but it sets up this for Damian Craig to fake the ball to Fred Beasley. Now you think it's run, good fake by Damian Craig. Now he gets outside where he's able to throw the ball and get a good lane to find Eric Lowe. Kirby Smart on the tackle. You can see the ball came loose, but he was well out of bounds. So, so far, what has happened is Auburn has been able to get him outside the box. And that, of course, is where Damian Craig creates all kinds of headaches. The pitch to Carter. Gertrude has five, has ten, still on his way. Inside the 15, Kirby Smart will knock him out of bounds. It will be a first and goal, Auburn Tigers. See, this Auburn football team, when they run the football, Damian Craig becomes so much more dangerous. Demontre Carter, who's had some problems holding on to the football this year, shows you the quick burst that he has, speed getting into the Georgia secondary, but this is a good sign for Auburn. They're running the football, running it successfully. Mike, they spotted him out at the 11, actually, so it's not first and goal. And you can see Terry saying, get a move on it or we're going to get a penalty. Play clock is down to seven, now down to six. Craig looks up at that clock and knows he's got to hustle. High formation, straight ahead with Beasley, and he'll take it for five and six yards as he goes to the five-yard line. Kirby Smart again. And right now, Joe Kimes has to be saying, my safeties are making far too many tackles. They really are. And Fred Beasley becomes the most important player beside Damian Craig on this Auburn football team tonight because if he can get started and get this running game where he can keep him honest, then Damian Craig has a little more success. 18 touchdowns, 7 field goals, 7 turnovers. That is inside the 20 this year. Second down. The Tigers need about 4. 
Eighth play of the drive to run it back into the boundary. This is Carter, blocker in front, and as he is shoved forward, almost, I think, could have the first down. Greg Wright making the tackle for Georgia. Ron, you can go back to in our conversation with Jim Donnan the other day. He was talking about Damian Craig, and because they're developing a running game this game, he said about Damian Craig, he said he helps his team win more than any other player in the league, and how much he admires him because he's carried the weight of this offense throwing the football. He has not had a running game this year. So let's see what they come up with. It is a first down, Auburn Tigers. First down and goal, and the ball is 36 inches away. Georgia leads it 7 0, but the Tigers trying to answer right back. Straight ahead with Craig. Quarterback sneak, touchdown, Auburn. Yard drive, and of course, it was set up with that outstanding kick return. Marquis Cooper. Marquis Cooper is the man who gave them great field position. Craig led them down there, and the extra point attempt coming up as Jared Holmes tries to make this a 7 7 football game. And he does. So there's a timeout on the field. 6.35 left to play in this opening quarter, and we are tied. Georgia 7, and now Auburn 7. We'll be right back. Look at this drive. Nine plays, 62 yards, 4 minutes and 15 seconds. Yesterday, Terry Bowden said we got to run the ball so Damian doesn't have to shoulder all the pressure. If you see Georgia with long drives, we must answer with the same thing immediately. And they did. Holmes kickoff again. No return. Mike, and let's check in with uh, Mike Tirico. Michael. Okay, Ron, what a message being sent by UCLA. They've scored 31 in a row at the Rose Bowl against Washington. Latest score, Kate McNabb. Dan Farmer covers 60 yards. Tell you what, UCLA may end up in the Rose Bowl. If they win this and beat USC next week and Washington State loses, that's the UCLA scenario. Right now, Washington State just scored to take a two-point lead. Okay, Michael, let me say this. He won't get the votes that the gentleman at Purdue will because of such an outstanding job up there. But I'll tell you what, Bob Toledo at UCLA certainly should get a lot of tallies for Coach of the Year, I, I think. I mean, he has done an unbelievable job after losing the first two games. Bobo saw that the play clock was about to run out, so he called a timeout. So we have a stoppage in play with six and a half minutes left in the opening quarter. It will take the break with him. We'll be right back. In Athens, Georgia, where the very first minute of this football game between Georgia and Auburn was marred by the injury to two potential stars when Auburn's defensive end Jimmy Brumbaugh's knee slammed into the helmet of versatile Heinz Ward for Georgia. It did so with such force that he ruptured his patella tendon. We're talking about the tendon if you feel just below your kneecap. It was ruptured, that is to say it's separated. He has gone to the locker room, requires surgery. He's done for playing college football 97. Heinz Ward had neurosurgeons take a look at him. There is no marked improvement from him in the past five to six minutes. He can stand up and walk in his own, but cannot run at this point run. Okay, Adrian, we'll uh, continue to... Uh Look for updates from you on Heinz Ward, and that is truly, truly a tough, tough situation for Jimmy Brumbaugh. Junior out of Keystone Heights, Florida, on the very first play of the night, and his season is over. Pass comes over the 20, 23, now the 24-yard line. That's Ricky Neal holding on to him. So it means that a redshirt freshman, Jeff Dunlap, is going to get a lot of playing time tonight for uh, Auburn. Bill Oliver said when we visited with him yesterday that Dunlap has made tremendous strides. You come back to that same thing. It says FR by his name. Yeah, freshman, he's 6'5", 245. But uh, Bill Oliver likes to use a lot of defensive linemen, so Jeff Dunlap's got a lot of play this year. Tied at 7 if you just joined us. We've just gone under six minutes to play in this opening quarter. Georgia, their second possession of the night. Pressure on Bobo, gets by, then will not get away from Clinton Reese. And the first sack of the night for the Auburn Tigers will knock him down back at the 20-yard line. Auburn sat still on the first drive, now going to try to make some moves. Bringing the outside linebacker, Quentin Reese, number 86, checking the fullback, Patrick Past, and getting after Mike Bobo. 
seen Mike Bobo doesn't have a lot of mobility to get away, and a lot of the plans are for Heinz Ward to play at quarterback tonight. I started to say, that was my next question to you, Mike. How much of the offensive game plan, if number 19 doesn't come back in, goes out the window this evening? 35, 40% of the game plan because he's involved in that much as a quarterback, wide receiver, motion player. Bobo. Throw in the middle screen intended for Corey Allen. And I think we looked up and saw the pressure from the defense and he just threw it into the ground. Probably a wise thing. But right now, on this series, after such a great opening drive, boy, Georgia seemed to be total out of rhythm on that one. Yeah, good adjustment. You have to give Auburn credit. They did some different things on defense. A little more pressure on Mike Bobo with Quentin Reese and a few adjustments there by Bill Oliver and the defensive staff. Langley standing back to kick. First punt for either team tonight. Marky Cooper's bad. This is a great coverage kick. Very high. The spiral turns over. And he will fair catch it at the 43-yard line. College football next Saturday at ESPN. Alabama and Auburn. And one of the most storied rivalries in all of sports. The Iron Bowl. That's at 7.30 Eastern time. That it's followed by Colorado State looking to wrap up the WAC Pacific Division as they beat San Diego State all next Saturday right here on ESPN. Heinz Ward on the sideline. They continue to visit with him. And if it is possible, as Mike said, he will go right back into the ballgame because of what he adds offensively. Craig straight back in the pocket. Going to be flushed, hit from behind, and he's sacked by Cochran. Antonio Cochran, a junior, out of Montezuma, Georgia. Loss of eight. Georgia worked all week. They brought their fastest defensive player up and, and made him pretend like he was Damian Craig all week. They worked on angles to try to get after Damian Craig, not to let him outside the tackle box. Antonio Cochran with a good tackle. Mike, the kid that they used uh, is a freshman. Uh, LeBron Mitchell, who's a quarterback, freshman out of Marietta, and he is very, very quick. And Jim said that's the reason we got him there, so our defense could experience that kind of quickness from a quarterback. Sets the screen. Gets it on the left side. This is Beasley behind a blocker at the 40. And then a nice job by Georgia to make the stop. Glenn Ford, a junior out of Columbus, Georgia, comes over to make the tackle. That'd be a gain of about eight or nine. You always worry about a team when they lost and they have an open date. When you look at Auburn offensively, they had one TD in the last 11 quarters, 11 turnovers in the last three games, 13 sacks in the last three games, and it looks like they fine-tuned their offense after the Mississippi State game to increase a little bit more running in the game. But the sack here puts them in bad situation, third and ten. Third down, the line to make. They need to take it to the Georgia 48-yard line. Play clock at one. They get it away from the shotgun. Craig gets outside. Now lobs the pass, and it is caught. That's Rusty Williams. Williams for a moment looked as though he had given up on the football and then went high in the air and took it away and it's a gain of 33. Every defensive coordinator in the Southeastern Conference will tell you when Damian Craig's on the run, he becomes dangerous. Sitting in the pocket, ball on the shotgun, now he gets outside. Antonio Cochran took the fake. Now Damian Craig on the move. Finds Rusty Williams, who made a great catch. Greg Bright on coverage. And what did Joe Kine say to us yesterday? Our kids are so impressed watching Craig throw on the run. He said, you can become mesmerized. He said he has a bazooka when he's on the run. His arm is stronger when he's on the run than sitting in the pocket. Quarterback draw. Looks for a block. Has five, six, and now seven. He will take it inside the 20. And let's check in again with Mike Tirico. Michael. Well, Ron, it looked like it wasn't going to happen, but... A major college football record equal, the record of Manny Hazard of Houston, as Randy Moss, late fourth quarter, catches his 22nd touchdown of the season. Marshall at home shuts out Ohio on that same field in Huntington, West Virginia. Marshall Toledo, MAC championship game, first Friday in December on the Deuce. Okay, thanks, Mike. 22 touchdown receptions. Joe Kynes, a defensive coordinator for the Georgia Bulldogs. 
his club of the second and short. Here's an option play. And Craig takes it back into the middle. And I'll tell you, Terry Bowden's offense has given Joe Kimes a lot to think about on these first two drives. That's the problem when you have an open date. A team with an open date, they can put some other things in or bring some things back that they worked on in fall camp. And that seems what Auburn has done. Joe Kimes knew when we talked to him yesterday he was going to have a problem with this ball club tonight. He wasn't sure what they would add. And seen, he's seen it all here in the first quarter. So with his first down, the line of scrimmage is the 15. We're tied at 7. Auburn is driving. Here's Beasley to the right side. Goes for a couple. And again, Grant along with Leroy there to make the tackle. Short running play, but it serves its purpose because, again, it is there for Georgia to think about on every play-action pass. Well, it's worked. Fred Beasley uh -huh. went to Rodney Allison and told him he wanted the football. That's, I believe, is his fourth rushing carry in this ball game. Caught a pass. So uh, Fred Beasley's little conversation with Rodney Allison has paid dividends here early in the ball game. He's getting his hands on the football. Big T.J. Dunnigan out of the football. Number 77, a sophomore out of Coffeyville, Alabama. Second down for the Tigers. They need the five. They fake the run. A pass in the flat, and it's knocked out. It is dropped by Tyrone Goodson. He kind of fought that football. And you could see Craig was under pressure coming from his left, and he had to deliver the pass quickly. Now that ball should have been caught by Tyrone Goodson. That was right in his hands. Damian Craig with a good play fake, setting up his third and eight. Rusty Williams checks back into the ball game. And, Ron, talking about Fred Beasley going to his coach, I like that because, you know, you play as a team. And if the guy wants to come and tell you how important it is to him, it's important. It is third down. As we mentioned, they need the five-yard line. Auburn goes for the shotgun. Georgia comes with a straight blitz. Craig's ball, air under it in the end zone. It's too tall and out of the back of the end zone. It'll be fourth down. Ron Bailey is the man with the cover on Hicks Poor in the play. What great coverage by Ronald Bailey, number five. He was all over Hicks Poor. There was no place to fit that ball in. Jared Holmes to attempt this field goal, and it's going to be from in the vicinity of about 28, 29 yards. They're going to place it down at the 19-yard line. So the right hash mark, a 29-yard attempt as Auburn tries to break the 7-7 tie. High pass, gets his kick away, and he got it. Shows his timeout on the field with 38 seconds left in this opening quarter. And our new score, the Auburn Tigers 10 and the Georgia Bulldogs 7 down. Well, let's take a look at what is at stake in this football game tonight. If Georgia wins, alive for the SEC title, but they also need a Tennessee loss. And, of course, they're alive for an alliance bid. They want to finish at 10-1, and one, a top-seven finish. And if Auburn wins, they are alive for the SEC West title. They need Mississippi State to lose a football game. Ben Stooley, the athletic director of Georgia, looking on. A couple of weeks ago... Uh, it was as big a celebration as this campus has seen in a long time as the largest outdoor cocktail party, which is always held in Jacksonville. A huge win, an upset win by Georgia, and they won it going away over Florida. And it has, it has really propelled a lot of excitement in the Athens area and also in the entire state of Georgia, for that matter. But right now, the Auburn Tigers have brought them back to earth as they are trailing 10-7 with 38 ticks showing on the clock in his opening quarter. And this is out of the back of the end zone. Can't tell you, well, Mike certainly can, being a former head coach, how valuable guys like Jared Holmes are. No returns of kickoff so far tonight by Georgia. ESPN College Football coming up again this Thursday night. It's the weekend kickoff show at 7.30 Eastern. Then it's off to Fort Worth, Texas, as SMU looks to close out their best season of the decade against the Horned Frogs of TCU Thursday night, right here on ESPN. And that'll be a former Auburn quarterback's last game, uh, coaching TCU, Pat Sullivan. Mm -hmm. he decided to uh, leave that job. Joe Kynes pacing the sideline, and Auburn has to call their second timeout. 
And some of the defensive players looking at each other. Got 11 error. They had 10. Kind of tough to stop that Georgia bunch with 10. So Auburn has only one timeout left as they have had to call two in this opening quarter. It's Rob Pate, the freshman out of Birmingham who went over to the bench. You're talking about Jared Holmes. Anytime your kicker can kick that ball in the end zone and, and make you start on the 20-yard line and go 80, the, the old coaching axiom of make them go 80 yards and they'll make some mistakes along the way if you don't give them a big play. And that's exactly what Auburn's trying to do defensively, not allow the big play. So Jared Holmes has been important here in the first quarter. Boy, he really has. Look at that percentage of touchbacks for him, almost 65%. And let's check in with Adrian Carson while we got a couple of seconds. Ron, with the Auburn defense back on the field, minus Jimmy Brumbaugh, just a thought on certainly uh, one player does not a team make, but without him in there, they've had to eliminate now four or five of their blitzes from that package because they're all predicated on his speed and how quickly he can get around uh, those uh, tackles and tight ends for Georgia. Plus, he was averaging 10 tackles per game, so someone's got to make that up. Well, now it's Shannon Subtle. A senior out of Lafayette, Georgia, who was cut in number 99. He and Dunlop will flip back and forth to that defensive end spot. First down for the 20. They roll the pocket. Pass is caught, but down immediately is Tony Small. And it looks as though that the doctors may be getting ready to take the wraps off Heinz Ward. They need him in there, Ron, for a couple different reasons. As Adrian Carsten's watching him run there. As Adrian looks like a doctor there, but... Uh, Hines Ward can give you such a big threat as a pass receiver, but Georgia would like to use him at quarterback a little bit tonight. They have the option threat, the draw threat. There's the doctor. Well, two seconds down to one, and that is the end of the opening quarter. So let's take a timeout. And an entertaining first 15 minutes it was. The Auburn Tigers 10, the Georgia Bulldogs 7. Young Bulldog fans on the sideline here, part of this uh, capacity crowd of 10-7 as we start play in the second quarter. Some of the defensive numbers, Neal for Auburn with three tackles in the first quarter, Grant and Colbert for Georgia with three apiece to lead their team. That's Michael Greer in motion. He had that big reception back in the first half. Ball is tipped and very dangerous. It is picked off to the Auburn Tigers. And it looks like Marcus Washington Dunlap came up for the football, and I believe Washington will have to look at the replay. Got a hand on it. Mike Bobo is going to fake, then throw, try to throw the quick screen. Marcus Washington getting his hands on it. And then Ron later, Antoine Nolan, number 13, went right up to Mike Bobo and said something to him. So a lot of jawing going on out there also. Well, this is huge as far as Auburn is concerned. The defense gives him the football back at the 22-yard line of Georgia. The Tigers already leading by three. Here's a pitch, and they run the reverse. This is Clifton Robinson, and what a play by Derek Bird to up in that. Derek, a senior out of Buck Springs, Georgia. That was a bad-looking play there, Nye. I don't know if somebody busted something. They looked like it was going to be a toss sweep to the left. That day we got busted on it. Clifton got busted. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Good mix by Auburn tonight. Ten rushing plays, seven pass. That just sets Damian Craig up a little bit more as we move along in this football game. 10-7. Auburn leads. Second down. There was a loss of one in that play. Craig sets in the pocket, drills the pass. Has it complete, and that's his tight end, Dillard, and he is very close to the first down as they move right into that throng of Auburn fans in the West End zone. Well, a great throw by Damian Craig out of Blount High School in Mobile, Alabama. He led his team, high school team, to two state championships, and uh, he's just a great leader for this Auburn offense. Sets up, finds Tyrone Dillard, number 41, gets his shoulders turned and up the field, Brandon Tolbert with a tackle. And they're going to bring the change in here, and it gives me an opportunity to explain as you look at the numbers on Craig, 6 of 8, 84 yards. I, I mentioned just now in the west end zone, 
uh, Coach Donnan cannot tell his players he wants them to do a good job of running north and south here because you run out of bounds. This, this field is east and west. It was flipped at a time because of the configuration of where the railroad track was back out over here to the east. Anyway, but they rarely played. They didn't have enough power to move the railroad tracks. <laughs> Football's big here. Let's move the railroad. About the only thing they haven't moved here. Jim Donnan in his second year. His ball club eight and one, but he knows they're trying to dodge one right here. As the ball is turned over, Auburn took it at the 22. Straight ahead with Craig and the quarterback sneak, and he'll have it. All they needed was just a couple of inches. Greg Bright grabs him. Terry Bowden. Yeah, baby. Yesterday, he mentioned, he said, we've had a good two weeks of practice. He said it was very tough the first couple of days when we came back after that shutout loss at Mississippi State. But he said, tell you the truth, the past week it's been raining. We've been working out in the mud. And he said, it's kind of like kids playing in the mud. They've had fun and couldn't wait to get here between the hedges and take on their arch rival, the, the Georgia Bulldogs. This is Carter, back into the boundary. Has five, has ten, counted off as a touchdown. And what a block by Fred Beasley as Demontre Carter takes it in for the six points. Well, Ron, you're right on Fred Beasley. Now, he set this whole thing up because when he made this block, he drove the Georgia defensive back all the way down the field. Let's see if we can pick it up right here. It's going to be on number five, Ronald Bailey. Look at the depth that he knocks him into the end zone. What a great block by Fred Beasley. You also could see Dunnigan and Demarcus Curry out front of the play as well. The big offensive lineman. Kick is up. Holmes is good. And right now, the Auburn Tigers are sending a statement to the SEC and also the folks here in Athens, Georgia. 17 to 7, Auburn on top. We'll be right back. ESPN's presentation of college football, Auburn versus Georgia, is brought to you by AXA and Equitable, a global powerhouse, a trusted friend, a formula for success. Well, Ugga looking out saying, hey, fellas, let's get it cranked up here. Down by 10 with 13.27 left until halftime. And listen to these numbers. 46 yards rushing for Auburn, 83 yards passing for 129. As you look at their starts, the number of plays and they have had sustained drives every time they've gotten the football look like a team on a mission tonight here's Holmes with the kickoff and this one is going to be returnable into a little breeze caught at the two this Patrick pass tries to get it outside he'll be tackled at the 24 yard line and let's see if Hines Ward yep, he's talking to his head coach and Heinz Ward is going to come into the ball game for the first time tonight. So what we have to keep an eye on now, first let's check in with Adrian. Well, the problem what, that he has here is pretty simple, guys. When he starts running, the blood starts pumping. Goes to his head, it begins to throb. That's when he loses his balance. So, yeah, he's back in the game, but how long he can go at a number of plays is going to be the question here. All right, we'll watch it. And we'll have to keep an eye because he lines up at quarterback, at wide receiver, sometimes at running back. Draw play to Edwards. Boy, he just whacked at the line of scrimmage. Spikes is right there to nail him. And let's check in again with Mike Tirico. Mike? Ron, near disaster for North Carolina. Final two minutes, a punch is blocked. Clemson on fourth down. Brandon Streeter and for nail on green. Dre Bly comes up with the interception. So North Carolina will finish second in the ACC. They close with Duke next week. Okay, Mike, that's really an impressive win after the huge mental thing they went through last year, the last week rather, uh, against Florida State. Bubble under pressure, and he's going to be sacked at this time. It's Leonardo Carson, and he gets away as the official, the umpire, gets decked from behind. As I look down at the number, he got away and went back over the 20-yard line. This pass rush has to be controlled now by Georgia, and one of the ways they'd like to control the uh, pass rush is put Hines Ward in a quarterback because then you've got a running thread back there at quarterback position. But I'm not sure with Adrian's report whether he can actually 
play the quarterback position just yet. Ted Davis is the umpire. Now here is Bobo lined up in the slot. And that's Ward back at quarterback. And he will run the football straight from the snap. You see the pressure and containment on the outside. That is a great job by Larry Casher. And also by the entire Auburn defense. But that's what you try to do when the pass rush becomes too much for you. You insert Hines Ward in at the quarterback position. But it just doesn't look like he can make this decision. Looks like it was a run all the way. And a very good job by Ricky Neal, number 50, of getting up in the field, making Hines Ward make a move early. Second three and out for the Georgia Bulldogs. Off the side of his foot. Very poor kick. Bounds at the 40. Now takes an Auburn bounce, and that thing is going to go dead at the 38-yard line. Boy, when they go bad, they go bad. That is 17 yards in the kick. But we talked about this earlier. When you have an open date, both these teams have an open date. I think it benefits the team that loses because you get a chance to micromanage a little bit and try to find the things that are wrong. Here's the punt off the side of the foot. But if you if you won, you've got everybody slapping you on the back, telling you how good you are. And it looks like Georgia just starting a little flat here, even after that great drive they had to start this ball game. They look superb on, on that opening drive. This is only a 17-yard punt. So the second time in a row, Auburn gets it across midfield. Pass in the flat, got it complete, picks four, and got to be close to the first down as Grant is outside to make the tackle on him. You know, I talked about this early. Georgia's offensive line dominated the first series, but I can tell you this. Now, Rick Trick at the offensive line coach for Auburn, whose team has been, uh, the offensive line's kind of been, people have been after them a little bit because they haven't been able to run the ball. You talk about taking over a game now. This offensive line is not letting anybody to Damian Craig. They're opening up the running game. They are doing a super job for Terry Bowden. 17 to 10, Auburn leads it, as you see, just under 11 minutes to play in the opening half. And uh, Georgia trying to close the door right here. Running play Beasley. Gets to the outside, has five, stiff arm, has ten, he's loose. Cochran saved the touchdown and the stiff arm by Fred Beasley. He just knocked the guy out of the way, and all of a sudden, the Tigers with a first and goal inside the ten. Yeah, Ron, if I was Fred Beasley, I'd meet with Rodney Allison, the offensive coordinator, every week because if you're going to have these kind of results, he just runs past Kirby Smart, the safety, who had the draw. And now look at the strength as he goes up the football field, finally tackled by Antonio Cochran. But Fred wow. Beasley is off and running in this football game. That's want to. You could see that lean. Five carries, 30 yards for him. First and goal. The ball just inside the 10. They push it back to Carter, and he turns the corner at the five-yard line. Is knocked out of bounds by Bright. Pulled DeMarcus Curry, number 69 again. Fred Beasley and DeMarcus Curry leading in there. When you look at DeMarcus, when he gets around that corner, uh, he, he has a sight to be seen. Mike answers something for all of us. They keep running into the short side of the field, and obviously it's been good for them. What have they seen there? One less player by Georgia. They got the strong safety to the field, so you got one less player. What Georgia's counting on is that sideline to be a player for them. Carter, four carries, 36 yards, and a touchdown. Second and goal. They give it to the Beasley straight ahead at the two at the one. Touchdown, Auburn Tigers. Ron, they are demolishing Georgia at the line of scrimmage. Fred Beasley has come to play tonight. Derek Bird, the injured Georgia players, you look at Beasley, and Mike, I used the term just a while ago of want to. Beasley was not going to be kept out of the end zone on that last run of this one either. Well, just think of this, Ron. For the last two weeks, everybody's been telling Georgia how good they are after beating Florida. Well, everybody's been telling Auburn how bad they are because they got shut out by Mississippi State. You get tired of hearing it. Fred Beasley's showing you, the offensive line showing you that they are tired of hearing how bad they are, and they're going to run the football tonight and put on an offensive exhibition. Two different schools of thought here on the open date. And Jim Donnan knows this game's getting away from him. He's got to find a way uh, to get Hines Ward involved or get Robert Edwards back running the football, or he's going to get routed here, and it's going to become a track meet. 
And that's when you start searching. You start searching for something to slow this avalanche down. Jared Holmes trying to make it a 24 to 7 football game. Good pass. Kick is up and he's got it. So let's take a break. 10-24 left in his opening half. And the Auburn Tigers stunning the home folks right now with a 17-point lead. We'll be right back. Auburn leads it 24 to 7 for the third straight year. Now Burger King will recognize outstanding student athletes through the one million dollar Burger King college football scholarship program tonight. Burger King students to the game are from Auburn quarterback Damian Craig. He is an adult education with a 346 grade point average and from Georgia junior offensive tackle Matt Stenchcomb a business major with a 394 GPA. Damian Craig. One of our students of the game, as you can tell, gets it done on the field as well as off the field. Holmes with the kickoff. This is pace, or pass, I should say, at the one-yard line. And he is going to be stopped short of the 25-yard line. The ball came loose, but the officials say no, the ball was down. Well, I'll tell you what, I, Jim Donnan, I think, would go into coronary arrest if they turn over the football again this deep in his own territory three touchdowns tonight one touchdown of the previous 11 quarters as Mike had made the comment just a moment ago so that week off and they used it to very good advantage or have so far in the first 20 minutes of this football game City crowd coming to life. Wanting the dogs to get something going just like they did on that opening drive, but they took it right down the field. Edwards cuts it back to the right, has four now five yards. Martavius Houston, number 25, the junior from Ladale Lakes, Florida, comes up to make the tackle. Ron, we talked so early about the safeties of Auburn. You've got to be able to control them. Here's a safety, Martavius Houston, coming up. Now watch, there's nobody to block him, so he's sitting in there in the cutback and makes the tackle you've got to be able to control them try to throw the ball against them to keep them out of your running game under 10 minutes left to play until halftime here comes the blitz Bobo gets his pass away he's got Corey Allen right over the middle nice job by Jason Bray with a one-on-one -on -one tackle it was Ricky Neal coming with the pressure right up the middle last year if you remember Georgia was behind 24 to 7 in Auburn so that they started that and and these players know, and Jim Donnan's reminded them on the sideline, hey, it's early yet. You know, when they went down 28 to 7, Mike, it was Greg Bright who told us yesterday, he said, we were stinking it up defensively. Thank goodness the offense came through for us. Hines Ward gets the handoff after being in motion. Runs back into the boundary. Martavius Houston again is there to help make the tackle along with Ricky Neal. And it looks as though everywhere that number 19 goes, particularly when he's in motion, there's a spot. Well, Martavius Houston's a safety. Brad Ware, Rob Pate, no matter who's in there, they're going to be so close to the line of scrimmage. You see right here. There he is right there, Houston again, to make the play on Hines Ward. Takes the block of Jermaine Wiggins, gets off of it, makes the tackle. Second down. 24 to 7. Auburn has shocked this crowd with the capacity house trying to get them going again. Pass tipped at the line of scrimmage, and I'll tell you what, it is a darn good thing. Dunlap is the man who tipped it. It's a good thing that Wiggins came back and played a little pass defense because that thing might have been picked off as well. How about Notre Dame today? Going down to LSU and Bob Davey, that ball club, uh, starting to play. Well, for everybody a who's been at the center, and, and we have said for a long time, we're prejudiced because he's a friend, but Bob Davey's going to be just fine at Notre oh, Dame. He's going to do a great job there. Just needs to get some players. There aren't any players right now. Third down. Line to make is the 45 and a half yard line. Here comes the blitz. Bobo sets up, just gets it away, and he's got a man open, but he didn't have time to set up and get it to Tony Small because Brad Ware was all over it. Brought to safety. Brad Ware played man coverage in the secondary. Brad Ware got a hit on Mike Bobo. 
Going to be holding. Defensive holding called against the Auburn Tigers. So Auburn had stopped them on a big third down play. Put an asterisk by that one. Should Georgia put it in the end zone? By the defense during a pass play. The foul will be penalized 10 yards from the previous spot. Mike Bobo is going to see down. the safety blitz. Try to get the ball. There's number 27, Brad Ware, with the hit on Mike Bobo. That's, nobody picked him up. There was the hold. I believe it was called on Antoine Nolan, number 13. That's the first accepted penalty in this ball game tonight. The new line of scrimmage, the Georgia 48. Here comes pressure from the outside. Quick screen over the middle, Hines Ward, and there to make the tackle is Martavius Houston. Martavius has done a really good job of everywhere that Hines goes, he's sure to go. Ron, good story on Martavius Houston. When he was five, he was shot, paralyzed. The doctor told his mom he may never walk again. Mother was in the room crying. The lady went by. They prayed about it. And uh, about three days later, uh, the Martavius Houston, the doctor said that uh, he would be able to walk and became the top recruit in the state of Florida. Joe's Auburn. Well, he's got five tackles in the early part of this ball game, and two of those are solo. He has been very active in the secondary. Timeout, Georgia. Your attention, please, Jameson and Steph. So we'll take it with him. 7.37 left until halftime. Auburn, 24 to 7. Now the good look from the uh, from the west end zone, the corner of this uh, capacity crowd, 24 to 7, our score. As you get a look just over the top of the hedges in some of this uh, crowd that <laughs> they've come from everywhere to see this one this evening. Second down. Georgia needs to take it to the 42-yard line as Bobo sets in the pocket. Now is flushed out. Dunlop after him. And on the comeback, the pass is caught. That's complete to Bailey. Champ Bailey, who goes both ways, offensively and defensively. And maybe he's the spark they need. They're looking for a spark. They caught Auburn this time. Now, here's what Auburn's doing on defense. They are trying to confuse Mike Bobo. Look at this now. There's the safety sitting up there. Then they back out. After Mike Bobo makes the call so that he can't check off, then he's thrown into heavy coverage to Champ Bailey against Jason Bray, number four. Well, you could see Bailey on the near sideline coming back pell-mell. That's a great job to help out his quarterback who was running for his life. Here's a reverse. It's Bailey again. Gets a block from Hines Ward. And then there, white shirts all over the place. Spikes knocks him out of bounds. And so far, the trickery has not worked. In fact, that's going to wind up being about a 12-yard loss for Georgia. The Takeo Spikes has been everywhere tonight also with Martavius Houston. But you see the reverse. Robert Edwards. There's the block by Hines Ward. And then a lot of players are going to go try to find Takeo Spikes and a lot of other players defensively for Auburn. You notice that Hines hit, made sure he hit him with his shoulder pads and not his head. Takeo Spikes, 99 total tackles coming in this game, two sacks. An outstanding linebacker who was the top recruit, Mr. Football, in Georgia when he decided on Auburn. See the safety's taking off again, pass is caught, that's Bailey again. And let's check in again with Mike Tirico. Mike? Well, Ron, you guys were talking about Bob Davey and the Notre Dame program going to Baton Rouge today and putting one on LSU. Autry Denson. A run-dominated game for the Irish offense. They beat LSU at home by 18. I think it's important, Ron, and Mike Tirico give us that score also. They've got two ball games left, but they need to get to a bowl game because they've got a lot of young players, and the benefit of going to a bowl is the great practice time you have with your young players, so it's going to be important for Bob Davey. Ninth play of the drive. It is third down. Line to make is the Auburn 28. Bubble protection breaks down and he's going to be tackled by Reese. Second time tonight that Quentin Reese has gotten to the quarterback. I think they've got Mike Bobo confused. They're giving him a lot of different looks, a lot of different coverages, twists up front, and you see number 86 Quentin Reese come off. He was on a twist, came off a block, and came Scott Free to tackle Mike Bobo. Dax Langley comes on to punt it away for the Georgia Bulldogs. And here's important for Auburn, Ron. Right now, you want to have the killer is instinct. You want to try to put these guys away before half. Good high coverage kick. 
Cooper. Fair catch and makes it at the 14-yard line. ESPN NFL Countdown every Sunday at 11.30. Join the distinguished faculty of Bristol University tomorrow for the best free game show in the business. And at 7 o'clock, the ultimate highlight show, NFL Primetime. Then at 8, Sunday night NFL, Jeff George and the Raiders take on the Chargers. 24 to 7 our score with 5 minutes and 27 seconds showing on the clock. I can tell you right now, Joe Kynes would love nothing more than to get a turnover so that his offense, or the offense of Georgia, could put seven on the board before halftime. Draw play. Beasley right up the middle, puts a head down. You can hear the collision. Blight and Grant combining to the stop. It's going to be a gain of short yardage. I agree with you, Ron. Joe Kynes is looking for a turnover, but if you're Auburn and you're Rodney Allison and Terry Bowden, you want to keep going right now. You've had success in this first half, and you don't want your guys to ease off at all. You want to get them in situations and plays where you keep attacking Georgia. And don't go conservative now. A lot of smiles from that uh, Auburn defense on the sideline, and for good reason. Second down. They need to take it out to the 25-yard line. And it's this time from the shotgun. They fake the run. Now called the rolls to his right. God gets him there, but he throws it short to Bailey. Has it complete for the first down. Nice looking route. He had two guys that were open, actually. That's the same route Florida State ran against uh, North Carolina last week. The shotgun, and they faked the ball to Minor, and they had the same kind of route. Here comes Karsten Bailey, number five, on the underneath route against Jeff Harris, number 13. But I like the play call because it's continuing to put pressure on the Georgia defense, not letting up on the heat. And again, the play action pass, they had to stick for Beasley for a count. And they're getting him outside again, outside the tackle box. This time they get it to him. And Beasley hit at the line of scrimmage, gonna be knocked down by Bright. Maybe no gain in the play. In fact, he lost a yard. About to go under four minutes until halftime. 24 to 7, the Auburn Tigers leading the Georgia Bulldogs in this first half from Athens. Well, Greg Bright was another one of the players we talked to yesterday. And, and you, when you hear one thing about this football team, they talk about the senior leadership. They took over this team and they believe strongly in the coach. Uh, the transition year is the most difficult year. Jim Donnan's in his second year, and now his players know him. Second down and 11. Again from the shotgun. Craig under pressure. Loses the football. Georgia has recovered. Stroud, I believe, with the hit, and it was Snellings who made the recovery. It's exactly what I was talking about that Auburn did not want to do. Well, Joe Kynes, the key is they're keeping him in the pocket, in the tackle area. There's the hit. Travis Straub caused a fumble. George in pretty good shape now offensively. The player now will rule down. It's third down. Now, Ron, they've taken the football back again. Boy, that was a clear signal. There's the hit. Maybe they called him with his knee down. I, I think you're right, Mike. It has to be uh, what it is. So, no turnover. Third down and many. But right now, Terry Bowden doesn't care. He's still got the football. Beasley with the running play. Has five, six, and seven. Going to take it up close to the 30-yard line. And all Auburn wanted right there was since they dodged a gigantic missile. Well, the cat had, away. if a cat has nine lives, they have a, an extra one because that played just a draw to, to set up the punt because they feel great about punting no this kid. football. Yep, they feel very, very grateful. This is the first punt of the night for the Auburn Tigers at 2 minutes and 37 seconds showing until halftime. Greer is the deep man. 
Holmes, who is the double duty guy, place kicker as well, stands back to punt. Line drive kick, it's returnable. Greer, 40, 45, 50. Runs it back into the boundary and out of bounds around the 41-yard line. Well, next Saturday on the Deuce, football uh, will be flying in Lexington. Peyton Manning leads Tennessee up against Tim Couch and the Kentucky Wildcats. Then at 6 o'clock, ball hopes are still alive as Clemson takes on South Carolina from Columbia. All next Saturday on the Deuce. Well, it's imperative, 2.16 on the clock. Georgia needs to score here. You can try to take this game back, and they only have one timeout left. Edwards, right side, going to take it inside the 40 to the 36. And a combination of uh, Houston and Neal on the tackle. And let's check in with Adrian Karsten. Adrian? That player represents a change in the style of uh, running Robert Edwards here. The first couple of carries, he was feeling his way through the hole, and that really made the offensive coaches for Georgia angry because that's the way he was running when he came back from that foot injury originally. Now we see him hitting the hole harder the way they want him to run. Okay, Adrian. Clock running. Under two minutes. Left until halftime. Bobo sets in the pocket. Pressure from the outside. That's Clinton Reese. Throws it back to nobody. And uh, to KO Spikes, who's saying, hey, it's grounding. The official said, nope. That's somebody in the area. If this was the ACC, that had been a grounding on that night. We were there. But uh, <laughs> the only player I saw there was number 79, Matt Stinchcomb, a tackle. So uh, Auburn wanted that call, didn't get it. I do applaud the officials on the decision that they made. One official thought that was a fumble a while ago, but another felt strongly that he saw the knee down, and it, it, it's good when you overrule if you saw something right. that the other guy didn't see. If he particularly had it, might have been unsighted. Third down, one of four and third down conversions tonight. The pass right over the middle is caught by Small. First and 10, Georgia. They will set up shop inside the 25. It's good for 14 yards. Well, Mike Bobo threw that ball right on the money. Talked about last year he had 16 interceptions, 13 touchdowns. This year, five interceptions and 12 touchdown passes. Remember, both teams have burned a lot of timeouts in the first half. Georgia only has one remaining. And the shotgun, Bobo swings it out. This is Edwards. 25 at the 20, and he'll take it to the 19. Spikes again in the stop. Bray Golf was the head coach here when they switched Robert Edwards from defensive back to running back. First practice, second carry, went off for 50 yards, and Joe Kine's defensive coordinator said, we've seen the end of him. <laughs> and that's for sure. He will not be back on defense. Bobo gets his pass away. Got it at the five-yard line. First and goal, Georgia. That's Tony Small. Same pass pattern over the middle to Tony Small. Georgia in business. This would be big, Ron, before the half to get in there and score because both coaches are going to talk about last year when they Auburn had that 24-7 lead. They'll both be talking about that at halftime. You see the ball a yard and a half away. Auburn 24, Georgia 7. Clock running under one minute. Left until halftime. Bobo pitches to Edwards. Can he get in? No. Stopped at the one-foot line. Auburn would not allow him to the end zone as Marcus Washington led the attack. And the clock's going to be a factor now. They're going to call that timeout. Georgia will use their final timeout. We'll take it with them. 29 seconds left until halftime. Let's take a break. Give the ball up and over. Auburn 24 to 7 quickly. Let's go back to Mike Tirico. Mike? Ron Buick Century Halftime Report coming up. We'll show you SEC fans what happened to LSU today, how UCLA is as hot as anybody in the country, and the story of 77 points in Lincoln. See you in a couple of minutes. All right, Michael. Back Ron, to our game. Ron, you have to have a couple plays called here because of 29 seconds. If you don't get in on this first play, you've got to line up and have the second call already called. They probably have three calls right now. Good point. Edwards over the top. Touchdown, Georgia. Mm -hmm. 
so when you go back and review the situation, Auburn all night long has been really special on special teams, and all of a sudden, they kick a line drive kick to Jarrett Holmes, got a line drive kick away, and it cost them because they, Greer got it on the run and gave them tremendous field position. With a low punt run, and then Mike Bobo stepped up to the plate. He had two excellent pass completions. Extra point by Hep Hines. Up, and it is good. Stadium clock shows 27 seconds left until halftime, and we have a 10-point ball game. Robert Edwards just over the top. Get him the football, a yard and a half behind the line of scrimmage, and let him go airbound, airborne. Number 47 gets hit by Martavius Houston, but strong enough to get in the end zone. Well, Houston really is the spy on him, isn't he? Oh, he Everywhere really is. he goes. <laughs> Martavius Houston to Keo Spikes have had great halves for Auburn on defense. So Georgia turned the tables after getting good field position, which is something that Auburn has had throughout the first half of play for the most part. And as you look at Mark Johnson, the kickoff specialist, a senior out of Columbus, Georgia, and he has a very good percentage as well as far as kicking the ball into the end zone. And now he has the slight breeze behind him. Mark Heath Cooper is the man back deep for the Auburn Tigers. I don't figure he's going to get to touch it. It should be a swift kick. Picks it low and on the ground. Cooper gets a good bounce from the three. 10, 20, tries to get outside, and he goes down at the 26. Clock shows 20 seconds left. One of the Cooper things that Cooper turn. has been slowed by, he had the separated shoulder, and it, it really put him back some, and you could see that time he got what he could, but he also went down. Can't run with the same reckless abandon. Excellent special teams player for Auburn this year. Wouldn't be surprised if Auburn just ran a running play and then headed toward the locker room, not taking a chance on a turnover. Here, I think they're just going to kill the clock, yep. go in and talk about it. So Craig takes the snap, goes down on one knee, and that's exactly what will happen. They will head to the locker room. So they're standing and cheering here in Athens, Georgia. The Auburn Tiger fans know they got a 10-point bulge. We are at halftime with a score, Auburn 24 and Georgia 14. Now with the Buick Century Halftime Report, let's join Mike Tirico. Michael. Well, Ron, closer than it was last year at the half when Auburn, a not a running team, and they have 74 yards. That's been the difference, and there is the young man I think has been the biggest difference. Fred Beasley with an outstanding first half. Not only running the football, but his leadership abilities. And, of course, on that one play, you could see him blocking and uh, paving the way for a teammate. He has done everything that's been asked of him tonight. Fred, a senior out of Montgomery. As you look at Damian Craig, also a senior. He's out of Pritchard, Alabama. Second half is underway. This is Cooper three yards deep, and he will not return it. Auburn's had great field position, Ron, and we've always talked every week about the short field. If you can play on a short field, you can win. And anytime you get the ball inside the 50-yard line, there's a touchdown, there's a touchdown, the 50. And then that's great field position there. And the two times they had them backed up, they didn't score. Average field position, 41 yards. So you make them work the length of the field and make the mistake. Well, let's see what adjustments that Joe Kimes and his defensive staff made at halftime. Craig wants to throw on first down. Batted down at the line of scrimmage, and that was Travis Stroud who got a big mid up and knocked it down. And Adrian Karsten, let's check in with you. Ryan, right there is a perfect example of the kind of passion I heard coming out of the Georgia locker room at halftime. The seniors stood up and they talked passionately about memories. Remember when we all got together this summer and no one missed a practice? No one had any excuses. Remember this game last year and how we came back and won it? Play with that passion in the second half. Don't get pushed around. Well, they're off to a good start. Travis Stroud knocking down that first pass by Damian Craig to open the second half of play. Pitch goes to Carter. 
Beasley in front, and this is going to be good for about three yards, maybe four. Ron Bailey comes up defensively as Joe Kimes looks on, and he knows it's a third down. And, and to build on what Adrian said coming out of halftime, when you talk to Jim Donnan uh, yesterday and Joe Kimes, they said about this senior group, they've given great leadership. They haven't had any problems. They're all on course to graduate. It's been no crisis this year, so they can coach football and play football. A tribute to the seniors of Georgia and the coaching staff. You look at Hines Ward looking on from the sideline, hoping that his defense can get a three and out. Damian Craig, well, his feelings are just the opposite. Line to make is the 30. That is pass complete, and that's good for the first down to Karsten Bailey. Boy, 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 Glenn Ford yes, comes over to make the tackle, but how many times has Craig done it this year? And, Ron, you go back again. High school, he won two state championships. He came to Auburn because he wanted to be a quarterback. Everybody else recruited him as an athlete. You see the big throw here to Karsten Bailey, and you were talking about Joe Kines wants three and out. But the senior quarterback will not allow that. It's the completion of Carson Bailey. Here are the defensive numbers from the first half. Bright, the linebacker, with seven tackles for Georgia Cochran with five tackles and one sack. Seventy-five percent. That's the completion percentage. And that ball is batted down at the line of scrimmage. This time, Marcus Stroud. Ron, you have a better shot of stopping Damian Craig if you keep him right in the pocket. He's six foot tall. You see the deflection. Here's where he becomes the problem because he's going to hit Rusty Williams with a big pass play that set up a score. And here you get him on a draw. You get him pinned in, and then you just need to make the tackle. And you get a deflection. Here you do a nice pass out of the pocket, but you have a better percentage of time. You look at here, 61 yards outside the pocket on four plays and a timeout called by auburn with the second down and 10. there is so much noise to their back and here in the stadium did not want to make a mistake so we'll take the break with a 13 37 left in this third quarter it is a deliberate departure from the norm 180 degrees from expected spacious leather trimmed interior available heated front seats and now it ties as jd power and associates most appealing minivan the new chrysler town and country lxi built on the belief that great cars appeal to a more passionate side chrysler engineered to be great cars it's the way the sun helps things grow in their own time it's the way bread begins as an ocean of wheat before rising in the oven. The way onions can make you cry, even when you're laughing. And it's the way we make over a million people their favorite sandwich every day, which, in case you're keeping track, is more sandwiches than the entire population of North Dakota. Subway. It's the way a sandwich should be. Well, folks, Doug is the man. Doug took this place global. Doug made commitments around the world. Doug convinced me to risk it all. And it was Doug who shipped everything with some company I'd never heard of. <laughs> Screwed the whole thing up. And that's why Doug is locked up in the closet. Whoa. You okay in there, buddy? Next time, make it FedEx, the most reliable express company there is. Can I come out now? No, Doug. I'm not finished singing your praises. presentation of college football Auburn versus Georgia is brought to you by Chrysler engineered to be great cars welcome back to the place looking for tickets for this one outside the stadium tonight 24 to 14 Auburn is shocking them right now we're early going third quarter if you just joined us they try to set up the screen pass, and he gets it away. No flag. Now here comes a flag, and they've got a call grounding. Brandon Tolbert had a hold of him. This call, crowd-induced. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a good call, though. There's no, there's no doubt about this. Now, one of the officials is coming in. Now, maybe they're saying there's somebody close to there, the... Yeah. 
And I think it's a good call. Brandon Tolbert was so quick to get to the quarterback. Number 28 coming on a blitz, misses the tackle, misses Cutney. It's Victor Riley. And there's nobody around that football. Well, Rusty Williams downfield a little bit. Personally, I think it's a gutsy call. I think, as I said, it was crowd-induced. Technically, maybe, yeah, but uh, Rusty was close enough. Ron, the one thing Joe Kimes has done in this ballgame, and it should show up here, is in this defensive line, he's alternated six defensive linemen, and he made the point to us yesterday in a close ball game that he feels like he can get a rush on Damian Craig in the third and late in the fourth quarter because all they need defensive linemen. Now he got a linebacker after Damian Craig in the last play, Brandon Tolbert. It is third down, and they need to take the ball all the way out to the 41-yard line. And if Craig can hear, it would be an amazing thing. They go with the running play, and this is Williams. He takes it out over the 15 to the 17-yard line. Ronald Bailey makes the tackle along with Kirby Smart. And all they were buying right there was just a little more real estate, some room to get the kick away. Now, what Jared Holmes does not want to do is what he did on the last punt, and that is kick it into the wind, end over end, rather than getting a coverage kick, a good spiral. And he got just that. Greer, all the way back to the 36-yard line. Crosses midfield and is going to wind up with a return of very close to 20 yards in the play. Mike Tirico, let's check with you. Ron, during halftime, we showed you the score of Arizona State with the lead over Oregon. Here's the points to get ASU to 17. Ryan Keeley, 14 yards to Ricky Boyer. Oregon has since added a field goal. The lead is 14 in Tempe, late second. Our situation, 24 to 14, but is momentum trying to shift to the fellows in red. We'll see on this drive as Georgia takes it over in Auburn territory to open the second half of play. Great field position by Georgia. Robert Edwards, left side. Big opening inside the 40. Spikes will make the tackle to spot him down at about the 38-yard line. Got to be a gain of eight on the play. You were talking to uh, Robert Edwards, and, of course, Tequil Spikes and Robert Edwards together. Uh, they were together last week. And Robert Edwards has a brother that's an outstanding quarterback named Terrence, and his lead school right now is Auburn. Second down at about two and a half. You see Sean McCallow, the fullback, come up and make sure that he gets the right change of play. As this time, Edwards takes it to the right side. Clinton Reese, along with Ryan Taylor, there to stop him. Edwards. And it's a loss of a yard and a half. It's going to be third down at about four. They talked about that conversation, and you ask him about what they talked about. I said, hey, did you talk a lot about the ball game and the possibilities of upcoming? He said, no, we didn't do that. It's hard to believe they were in a football game together at a high school ball game or college ball game, Florida a &M, and they didn't talk about this game six days later. Spikes, by the way, in that first half had six tackles, three solo. Neal had seven in the first half for Auburn. Pass right over the middle. Nice grab by Wiggins. And the one-handed stab. It'll be a first down plus 10 more. Well, what a catch by Wiggins. You're right. It was a stab, too. Right hand. He controlled that football. And look at Bobo with his appreciation to the big tight end. Just put a big mitt out there and grab that thing in with one. Go back to what Adrian Carson said. When you've got a good senior class, there's the catch by Jermaine Wiggins. When you've got a good senior class and you've got great leadership on your football team, they're not going to fold the tent when you're down 24 to 7. They know how much they've got invested in this program. They do not want to fold it. First down, the ball inside the 29-yard line of Auburn. Tigers lead it 10 to nothing. But Georgia trying to fight their way back. Here's Edwards. Takes it uh, for about three yards. Ricky Neal holding on to him. That would be his eighth tackle of the night, speaking of Neal. 
You know, the other thing that, that Robert talked about that I, I thought was really interesting, he got the early injury this year. He's been injured before, and he said people started publicly saying he was not mentally tough, that he became injured too, too easily. And he said that's anything but the case, but when you're hurt, you're hurt. So that's another thing, Mike. He's played through some things this year. It really has. Uh... Straight in the pocket. Right down the middle with the pass. Well overthrown and almost picked off. Brad Ware was the closest man to it. And that almost turned to disaster as Heinz Ward was uh, not even close to it. Boy, a big mistake there because Brad Ware brings that down. They silenced this drive. Just couldn't hold on to it. It's going to be third down. This is the pass right here to Heinz Ward, but he's nowhere around. Brad Ware has a chance to intercept that football. Ron, what... Georgia had success late in the first half with was the in routes, the dig routes, which are about 15-yard routes and break them over the middle. And Tony Small made a couple nice catches in the first half. Let's yep. see if they try to find him. They got a tandem. Three wide receivers set to the left this time. Bobo, lots of time, gets the pass. Almost intercepted that hit, Rob Pate. I think it surprised him as Brown was the man he was trying to get the pass to. Good job by Rob Pate. You were right. They decided to go to three wide receivers to the wide side of the field right here and work the tight end back on the back side against Rob Pate. And here he is right here in good coverage on Larry Brown. Mike, they're going to go for the field goal. It will be an attempt of 38 yards. And this is an area that uh, Jim Donham has not been overly thrilled with, his field goal kicker. Ball is down, and he's not going to be thrilled with this one. That is off to the right and no good. So all of a sudden, that momentum that Georgia was building, they could have cut it to a seven-point game there, and they missed the field goal. Let's take a timeout. 10.02 left to play, third quarter. Missed just a moment ago. Half high so the Georgia Bulldogs just barely wide right. Yeah, he thought he had it. Craig from the shotgun, rolls the pocket, gets his pass well overthrown, hits four, the intended receiver. Hicks, by the way, from uh, the state of Georgia, out of Marietta. He took a hit again, talking about Damian Craig from Brandon Miller, 51. So it's paying off a little bit for Joe Kynes, the defensive coordinator, to alternate those defensive linemen, keep fresh people after Damian Craig. Mike, isn't this twice now on first down in the second half that Auburn has thrown the ball rather than running they, they, as they did in the first half? Getting away a little bit from the running game that was so successful for them in the first half. Draw play. Craig wrapped up by Stroud, gets away, and is going to pick up about four more yards, I thought, for all the world that Marcus Stroud had him and Champ Bailey finally comes over to make the tackle. Well, it was interesting when we talked to Greg Bright the other day, the linebacker for Georgia, he said the best running back on the Auburn team is number 16, <laughs> Damian Craig, so he said we've really got to concern ourselves with his scrambling ability and the draw plays. Third down, the line to make is the 31 and a half. Clock running, under nine and a half to play, third quarter. Auburn leads it by 10. Georgia needs pressure out of that defensive front right here. Maybe an option play, Ron. We haven't seen that yet for a while. First half, right? Sets in the pocket. Deep over the middle. He's got him and off and running. The defensive backs collided, and Bailey's going to take it the distance. This will be 67 yards. Carson Bailey Ron number five on a post route and just poor pursuit by the free safety Kirby Smart Jeff Harris number 13 trying to track him down but you know Mike he picked him off he picked off his own man that knocked him just off stride enough that he could not give chase I believe and the pursuit of again the free safety Kirby Smart had to be a little bit deeper right there than he was. Jared Holmes with the extra point. Let me change what I said. Rather than 67, it was 76 yards. The new score, Auburn 31, Georgia 14.
31 to 14, and Joe Kine's defense normally doesn't give up the big play. No, and Ron, you go on the heels of the missed field goal, and you catch your defense down a little bit. Here's the post pattern right here now. You're looking for help from your safety. That's Jeff Harris. But here comes the safety into the picture, and he's got a bad angle. And the ball is going in the direction away from him. And Karsten Bailey with a touchdown. And as we said, because, as you pointed out, he was flat, it was a bad angle, and, and uh, Smart actually picked Harris off, knocked him off stride, and could not pursue any further. And that's big after that missed field goal, because your team has a letdown with the missed field goal, and then you give up the score. Hines Ward, four yards deep out of the end zone, going to try to take it into his own hands on the return, and he'll bring it out to the 25. Well, coming up, ESPN's NFL Prime Monday. Join Mike Tirico and company at 7.30 Eastern for 90 minutes of non-stop NFL news features and analysis, leading you right up to ABC's Monday Night Football. This week, the Buffalo Bills take on the ageless Dan Marino and his Miami Dolphins, 9 o'clock Eastern on ABC. Back to a 17-point lead for Auburn. Bobo sets in the pocket, throws it back to Robert Edwards, and he dropped the football. Boy, they had set it up and had it just perfectly, and he overthrew it. Couldn't have a better call on than Jim Donnan had on that play. Had exactly what he wanted. Robert Edwards is going to get the fake, and then he's going to continue out of the backfield and against the linebacker. Look at this. I mean, wide open. Just doesn't bring it in. Maybe a little bit too long, but had the play they wanted. You know, Ron is just thinking of Heinz Ward has not been a factor tonight. From the first injury for the first play. Not been a factor in this offense tonight. Here's a screen pass, and that's going to be good for maybe one yard. And let's check in quickly with Mike Tirico. Ron, since Texas Tech's administration said we're not going to a postseason game, if A&M wins tonight, they clinch the Big 12 South. Dante Hall, three-yard score. Aggie, easy over the Sooners. So R.C. Slocum's ball club uh, getting it done. And uh, Texas Tech. Big win, Spike Dykes. Yeah. I mean, he's, uh, he's doing a wheel of a coaching job this year. Third down. Georgia needs to take it out to the 35-and-a-half-yard line to pick up the first down. See the pressure from the outside coming. Bobo's pass too low. And the fact if he had thrown it higher where it should have been caught, it would have been caught but by a white jersey. Well, what happened is Tequil Spikes came on the blitz. He was picked up. It was blocked very well. He's going to be blocked here, but because of the quarterback in trying to throw, find a throwing lane, he gets a hand on it. He's blocked. Brad Stafford had him blocked, but he got a hand up and deflected the football. Max Langley to punt. It's the fourth one for him tonight. Cooper is the deep man for Auburn. Eight minutes exactly left in the third quarter. Good high coverage kick. Calls for the fair catch and makes it at the 29-yard line. That's 45 yards in the kick and nothing on the return. Cooper makes the fair catch. Well, next Saturday, we'll be bringing you the classic rivalry, Auburn and Alabama. And on Friday night, check out Classic Sports Network for a rebroadcast of the last two Iron Bowls, which we had for you here on ESPN. At 7 o'clock, the 95 game, which was not decided until the final play. And then in 96, Gene Stallings' final regular season game as tied head coach and another great finish. It's Friday night on Classic Sports by ESPN. Hand off to Beasley, the first man through, and he's going to drive his way, move the pile for about five yards. Well, I can imagine this. Now, Alabama's had a bad year and uh, a tough year, Mike DeBose's first year, but you know what? They could salvage an awful lot uh, next Saturday night. Uh, they can beat these old boys from, uh, from Auburn. So uh, I'm sure they're working in their office as we're speaking right now, trying to get a plan together to find a way to get that Alabama team to, to be competitive and beat Auburn next week. And Gobo pacing on the sideline, coming back over to talk to some of his offensive uh, cohorts before they come back to the field. Meanwhile, Damian Craig and company. They give it to Beasley. He'll take it short of the first down. It's going to be third and about one as Brandon Tolbert gets up off the bottom of the stack. Hines Ward, in case you joined us late, what Mike was alluding to on the very first play from scrimmage, collided 
with defensive lineman Jimmy Brumbaugh. Both injured. Hines had to come to the sideline with uh, his head. He was he was somewhere out there. Jimmy Brumbaugh injured his leg and had to be taken to the locker room. He's gone for the night and for the season. And you can see Hines Ward just has not been a factor tonight. This is Carter. Got to be hit at the line of scrimmage. That's Greg Bright who will make the tackle on him. And I don't know if he got the first down or not. That was a good play by Greg Bright because he was able to work his way underneath the block of Demarcus Curry and number 23, Fred Beasley. A nice play by the senior linebacker. Seems to step up, find the opening, and get in there and make the play. Yep, he did not make it. You know, Carter has had so many problems turning over the football. That time particularly, Mike, he looked as though he was taking his special care to make sure he didn't let go of it. And because of it, he was a step short. Well, he knows if he fumbles that football, he's going to be in the pine. Not going to be a lot of chances when you fumble. I think Auburn's going to punt this football here. Yep. Fourth in the yard, unless they try to draw him off sides. Or... Damian Craig was standing right there at the sideline talking with Coach Bowden, and you're right. Now the special teams are gathering and coming back on the field. You don't want to give any great field position, even though it's only a yard. You've got control of this football game right now. You don't want to make it a short field for Georgia. And there's no punter out there. They're starting to say, <laughs> where is Jared Holmes? Here he comes. Well, we were bragging on Jared <laughs> early in the ball game. But I, I want to ask you something. you remember this happened at a game? North Texas and Oklahoma? Was it two years they ago? They snapped the ball. They snapped again. the ball. There was no punter back there. One of the darndest things I've ever seen. Georgia with a 10-man rush. And Holmes. Oh, this is a beauty. His best punt of the night. All the way back to the 10-yard line is Michael Greer, 52 yards. They ought to bring him on late every time. Mike Tirico, let's check with you. Well, Ron, unfortunately, under 1,000 people on hand in Louisiana for Eddie Robinson's final home game, 55 years of coach, emotional pregame ceremony for the 78-year-old Robinson, his last home game, a loss to North Carolina A&T. Michael Bassnight had four touchdowns in the two-point victory. 37-35. Then Mike were what over 200 of his former players who had played in the NFL were going to line the field tonight or this afternoon to be there for him. Mike Bobo on first down, hit from behind, and he's sacked by Carson. Leonardo Carson's come a long way, Ron. He was a quarterback in high school. They recruited him as an outside linebacker and then moved him inside. He came, came to camp at 270 pounds, made a great outside move there to get to Mike Bobo. Said that when they moved him in defensive nose tackle, they didn't talk about those double teams, though. <laughs> Spence Combs simply could not handle him on that play. This is Hines Ward. He'll run it. 5 10 Close to the 15-yard line, and it's not going to be nearly enough. It'll be third down. And Spikes makes the tackle, but it is a gain of 12. And just watching him run that play, he doesn't look like he's full speed. Uh, Heinz Ward, just not the same player that we've seen before. The injury has really affected him. Takeo Pipe, Spikes just moving down the line of scrimmage. A real good tackle. Butkus candidate uh, with a nice, solid tackle. He knows how to make you absorb his yeah, he really He runs through you on the tackle. Brings this entire 221 pounds. On third down, Bobo steps up, drills the pass. Hines Ward complete has the first down. Hate on the tackle, but it is the first time, really, that Ward has contributed to do anything big in this ballgame. They need him. They still got a lot of time, 414 in this quarter. Hines Ward just on a, a dig route over the middle again, an inside move, and there's the tackle by Rob Pate. You got room? You see three wide receivers coming to the right, to the bottom of the screen. Bobo on first down. They throw the middle screen. Hines Ward going to take it for four, maybe five yards. 
And Carson again. Leonardo Carson who came back into the middle to make the hit. Ron, Mark Tavius Houston had that play played perfectly. He just didn't make the tackle. You, as you see him look to the sideline, he's in perfect shape right here to make this play. I mean, he's right there. He's going to get picked off there to block. Gets a hand on Hines Ward, but can't bring him down. Octavius Houston, by the way, has eight tackles in the ballgame, two solo. Bobo's pass, complete. It's Wiggins, the tight end, and close to the first down. In fact, I think he's going to have it as Larry Kasher will put the stop on him. But this was what Auburn wanted Georgia to do. Have to nickel and dime you down the field, figuring that they're going to make a mistake. Again, playing field position, punting the football, punting them in the hole, and then making Mike Bobo with the short throws and short runs take a lot of time, figuring they're going to make a mistake here and turn the ball over or have to punt the football. Number 22, Orlandis Gary, a junior out of Washington, D.C., comes into the backfield again. Auburn shows blitz, and here they come from the outside. Bobo puts it up on top. Got man coverage down there, and it is knocked away. That's good coverage by Nolan on Corey Allen. Trying to get it all on one, uh, one shot, but Antoine Nolan would have none of that. 5'8 sophomore trying to take advantage of him with Corey Allen, 6'3 height. And he played big. That stops the clock with 2.48 to play, third quarter. Jim Donnan's done a great job here at Georgia. Second year, he has really brought the program along. They get their substitutions done. It's second down and 10. Blitz comes up the middle. Got the pass over the middle to Bailey. And it is taken away by Ware. Bobo makes the tackle at the 30-yard line. And that's the mistake they were looking for. Flag is down. And it's hard to tell if this was when it was possession Georgia or possession Auburn. Call block in the back after the interception. Takeo Spikes Blitzen being picked up by Kenley Ingram. Here's the pass. Champ Bailey. A good hit by Larry Casher. And then Brad Ware picking it off in the air and uh, great field position for Auburn. Mike Bobo making the tackle. And at this juncture, as you look at the number of turnovers, Auburn still turnover free tonight. And Georgia with two. The first, a tip pass, and now a fumble after the ball had been caught by Baylor. So the penalty puts it just across the 48-yard line. Counter Trey, and this is Carter. Hennestein, and he is going to take it inside the 40 and down to the 35. And I'll tell you, DeMarcus Curry with an outstanding block on the play. And he has played big in the offensive line, not just because he's 6'5", 315, but he's played big. But, Ron, you just think about this Auburn football team. If they ran the ball as well as they're running it tonight, uh, the entire football season, what a great team they would have been. Just ran over Kirby Smart, number 16, to safety. Come on, Trey Carter. But uh, they have run the football tonight and taken a lot of pressure off of Damian Craig. Going under two minutes to play. Carter tries to bounce it to the outside. There's nothing there. Bailey got to him first. Well, one of the last things that Terry Bowden said when we uh, visited with him yesterday was that's what the design was this evening. He wanted to take the pressure off his quarterback. He said, we went back and we looked at the running plays. He said, I want to see the running plays that had been successful, and those were the plays we were going to use. They used them well tonight. 117 yard rushing the football. Rick Trickett, the offensive line coach, has to be real happy with the offensive line. He really does. Curry, one of those who we have talked about a lot this evening. Carter in motion back into the boundary. Lobs the pass over the middle, and he's got it. That's Hicks Poor 
inside the 15-yard line. It is first and 10. Auburn Tigers, Kirby Smart on the tackle. But normally when a quarterback throws over the middle and just slows up and puts that much air under it, you know you got a fellow wide open. Ron, they just trying to, all four receivers trying to run streak routes to work on the free safety. And there's the catch. Good catch by Hicks Poor. Auburn now with four plays over 20 yards in this ball game tonight. As you see, we're about to go into one minute to play third quarter. The pitch comes to Carter, turns the corner. He'll be bumped out of bounds inside the 10, and Beasley out front blocking. And let's see, they will mark it down. It looks like at about the seven and a half yard line. Ron, what happened on that previous play is what you do is you try to entice the free safety with four wide receivers going deep. Now, here's one, and here's two, here's three, here's four, but you're reading the middle free safety. And now they throw the football, hit him, hit Hicks four. So you're trying to stretch the, the free safety with four guys going deep, and you just read, try to throw opposite of where he's leaning toward. High formation, only one wide receiver, and they go straight up the middle with Beasley with a handoff, trying to catch Georgia guessing. Leroy on the stop for the Bulldogs. And it is going to be a third down, and they can pick up the first, and they take it just inside the two. Good luck right there at Rodney Allison, former Texas Tech quarterback. In fact, he told a funny story that he went to Nebraska, went to Lincoln on a recruiting trip when he was in Midland, it was Midland High School. He played it. He got off the plane in Lincoln. There was snow, and he turned right back around and asked if they'd take him back to Dallas, where he had just left from. He was going to stay in the state of Texas and play. Ron, if they score here, you can pick up the hymnals because church is over. They are set up. They're going to let the clock go down here to end the third quarter. They're set up here for the knockout punch. Timeout is called by Auburn. 13 ticks left on the clock in this third quarter. We'll take it with them. 31 to 14. The Tigers knocking on the door again. And the play they've come up with is Craig from the shotgun. They fake the run, and he's going to take it as a quarterback sweep. He will score. Damian Craig. Jen Donovan knew coming into this ball game, Jen Donovan, that he's the guy that, that could absolutely break his neck. He admired him. He said, watch the tapes. He sees him firsthand tonight. And I think you're seeing a, t a team, this Auburn team, benefit from the open day. They were a tired football team. And you've seen a quarterback that benefited the most for the open date. They had nine straight football games and open dates. You see an arrested quarterback and arrested football team taking apart the Georgia Bulldogs. And Mike, the influence of the running game without yes. wearing it out, you could see 94 Leroy had to go with the influence to make sure that he went with Beasley and at one step took him away from uh, Craig. It's, it's big, Ron. When you've got two dimensions and you got Damian Craig now, that is big. And, you know, I you keep harping back on the open date and I'm telling you, I've seen it happen when teams win and a big win over Florida, and whether you go to class or cafeteria or the, the community or wherever you go, the well-wishers and backslappers are telling you how good you are and it's just really tough to concentrate. You know, Bobo said he walked in his first class the following Monday and even the teacher uh, asked the students to give a standing ovation. Here's the kick by Holmes. Ward six yards deep, and his uh, counterpart, Champ Bailey, said, nope, let's don't bring it out. And that is the end of the third quarter. So there's a timeout on the field, and a shocker here in Athens tonight so far. Auburn, 38, Georgia, 14. Side of the uh, stadium, this puts a new meaning into the Georgia faithful.
15 minutes left in this football game, and I'm telling you, they're heading out of here by droves. Their slogan is, we're with you, win or tie. Bobo pitches the ball back to Robert Edwards, turns it up, has five, has ten, and lost the football, but they came off the ground. It's going to be a gain of ten and a half yards on the play. No quit in Robert Edwards. Trying to find a big play to get his team back in this ball game. There's so many people in this stadium, oh, Ron, it still looks full. <laughs> yeah, there's still there's a lot of people here still with this Georgia football team. Hines Ward. Finally pushed out of bounds by Casher. And let's check in again with Mike Tirico. Mike? Third quarter just getting started out in the Phoenix area, Ron, and it's one-sided for Arizona State. Joe Sesta, the tip. The interception led to a Mike Martin touchdown. 21-point lead for the Sun Devils. Arizona State, if that stays that way, Washington State and UCLA would all be 6-1. and one. They all need some help to see who gets the Rose Bowl. Yeah, that, that has turned into a real dogfight out there, Mike, with some surprises. Washington, an awfully good football team, but they lost a couple of people that were key to them, and it's hurt them tremendously. And the Big Ten waiting on their representative next week. Hines Ward, throwback, and that ball, yep, he caught it. That's Allen, and he's going to be tackled for a loss. As Spikes was not fooled, he was out there in the flat, and again, every bit of trickery that Georgia has tried tonight just hasn't been there. Two weeks preparation, Auburn's looked at them all, and they've been in great position all night. Martavius Houston, number 25, everybody's got a good read on Corey Allen. There he is, Takeo Spikes. He's had an All-American night. He really has. He really has. And Heinz says, my fault. He threw the pass so low. There was nothing that Allen could do with it. In fact, he might have been better off just to drop it. Bobo in second down. Drills his pass. Has it complete? Did he catch it inbounds? Yes. At the 40-yard line, Champ Bailey. Good for 15 yards. Bailey, of course, we mentioned back in the first half, a starter at cornerback and also plays wide receiver for the uh, Georgia Bulldogs as well. Well, Mike Bobo with a good throw right there. He ran, uh, talked about all summer that his entire football team, offensively, the wide receivers and running backs, showed up at workouts three, four times a week. He never had to ask anybody to come. They were all there. He ran the workouts. Here's the reverse. Hines Ward, blocker in front, and what a defensive play by Carson. Leonardo Carson not only has a couple of sacks in the ball game, he has been outstanding. And again, another one of those plays trying to catch Auburn off guard. Hand off to Hines Ward. You're going to see number 95, Leonardo Carson, being doubled by Larry Brown and Antonio Fleming, and he busts the double team. It makes the tackle. Well, Georgia has not been able to run the football here in the second half. Really have it. Second down at about 16. Houston coming to the outside. Ball is tipped. Dorsey, I believe, is the one who got a hand on. Ron, we, we talk about uh, Takeo Spikes. The Martavius Houston, now he came on a blitzer. He's had the other great night. There's Mr. Football when he came out of senior year to Keel Spikes, and uh, the top recruit in the state of Florida was Martavius Houston. They were at Florida State. They were talking about whether they were going to go to where they were going to go to school, and both of them kind of convinced each other to go to Auburn. So it's third down, and they need to take it to the 30-yard line. Keep this drive going. Bobo puts air into this one. Got Hines Ward out there, and he will score. 45 yards in the pass play. Well, they picked on Antoine Nolan, number 13, who's been up to every challenge he's had, unless there's a bust in coverage here, unless he's looking for help. 
No, he just can't. Heinz Ward just ran right by him. And Mike Bobel put enough air on it, under it, to get that ball to Heinz Ward. Now, Georgia's going to go for two to make this a 16-point game. Yeah, two touchdowns, two extra, two uh, two-point plays away from tying this. Ward in motion. Quick pass. Incomplete. Flag is down deep in the end zone. And Tequillo spikes. Martavius Houston again breaking on that pass. Now George is applauding. Going to be holding. Mm -hmm. well, 12 men on the field. That's why they broke the pass play up. But they still got 12 out there. You know what? They sure do. Everybody's kind of looking it around. <laughs> well, we've seen that a lot this year. No one's coming off, so they're going to get. They're going to play with 12 again here. Now the there goes somebody off. Larry Casher's leaving. Well, now they're, they're sending somebody back. back. All right, now <laughs> two guys are coming on. Two guys are going on. All right, that that should make it 11. So Georgia again gets a chance at a two-point conversion. And they fake it to Edwards. Pass wide open. Hines Ward. We have a 16-point game. I think maybe that'll stop some of those fans from leaving now. Some of those folks over the fraternity house. Come on back. <laughs> Come on down here. So there's a timeout on the field. 12.45 left. 38-22. Auburn by 16. ESPN's presentation of college football, Auburn versus Georgia, is brought to you by The Document Company, Xerox. Now take a look at that. Gorgeous, gorgeous full moon. It is clear, and it is getting really cold here in North Georgia. But warm enough here between the hedges. They have made it a 16-point game. It's going to be Markeith Cooper from the four. Cooper's going to be tackled just shy of the 25. Adrian Karsten, what do you have for us? Well, Ron, no one was happier about that Bulldog touchdown than my pal to my left here. Now, I get to see a lot of mascots week to week, but Ugga the Fifth was named the most popular mascot in all of college football. As a matter of fact, Sports Illustrated made him the cover boy, but can you imagine what the centerfold was? Not only is the most popular, but could be the most intimidating. Last year against Auburn, as Robert Baker, the wide receiver for Auburn, was coming out of bounds after an incomplete play, there's Uga right in his, well, face. How about that, Uga? Good man. Get Adrian, Uga. Adrian, I wouldn't get up quickly. This running play by Carter. Bright and Sipe on the tackle, and it's going to be a gain of about three yards. Got to gamble a little bit now if you're Joe Kynes. Uga wants a blitz here. That statue erected here in 1991, which is in the east end zone of Sanford Stadium. Adrian just came out of his house. Second down. They need to take this ball out to the 34-yard line. Under 12 minutes to play in the ball game. You see the linebacker creeping up on the outside. Here's the pressure, and he had to get it away too quickly. And that was Grant who was coming in. Hicks poor turned around, and the ball was already behind him. Yeah, you, now you have to change your plan a little bit because you got to become very active now and blitz a little bit more than you'd like to blitz Damian Craig. OG Grant, number 58, came. No one picked him up. You're right. Hicks poor shortened his route up, but the ball was thrown too quick. Big down right here. You better Georgia. Do. As far as momentum is concerned, six of ten for the Auburn Tigers on third down conversions tonight. Here they come in the blitz from the other side. Craig's pass got it complete. It's Karsten Bailey. And he will have the first down to take it out across the 45-yard line. And the pool of Damian Craig has been the thing that has put the sting in Georgia's heart tonight. Well, th this was a blitz, but they get a good cover or good cushion on the top side right here. 
You're going to see, here's the blitz, first of all. Here's the blitz coming from outside. But here's the cushion now, man coverage, so it's zone, it's a zone blitz right now. Karsten Bailey's getting too much of a cushion from Larry Mann. And the first down by Auburn. Jim from the shotgun, he hands it off to Beasley, left side, he'll take it for a, a couple of tough yards. Cochran and Tolbert combining on the stop. The other way, Ron, that the running game for Auburn initiated tonight will help them is because now when you have a lead like they have, 16 points, you can run the ball a little bit more and run the clock. Harry Bowden continuing to pace on the sideline. The clock is running to 10.45, now 10.44 remaining. Two yards on the play, second and eight. Craig looking up at that play clock. They still have 10 seconds. Running play, and Carter slowed up in the backfield, and he's going to be tackled for the loss. Grant is the first man, and also Bright combining on the stop, and they really gummed that one up from the get-go. That's how you stop the counter uh, counter tray play. Oh, you get penetration. OG Grant got up the field, and he beat the blocks of the backside guard and tackle. See him right there? makes the play and starts to play on DeMontre Carter and then Greg Bright finishes him off. Another big third down. Third down. The line to make is down at the 43 of Georgia. Auburn leads it. 38-22. Under 10 minutes to play. Joe Kimes looks on and he knows how big this stop could be right here. Play clock is at 3. It's at 2. Gets it away. Craig... Gets away from one, will not get by the second, and he's sacked by Grant. Actually, he had a hold of him from the get-go, took him down, and three times Damian Craig has been sacked tonight. O.G. Grant had to play last year as a freshman, getting better and better, has made a couple big plays in this last series. This comes on a blitz, a missed block by Fred Beasley, and O.G. Grant holding on for life. It is incumbent upon uh, Jared Holmes to get a lot of air under this one and have a good punch. He does not want the Georgia Bulldogs to pick up any more momentum. Good kick. Hanging spiral. Now it will turn over all the way back to the 22-yard line as Greer. Breaks the wave at the 40. Crosses the 50, and Georgia will have the football in Auburn territory to begin with 8.45 left in the game. It's a 48-yard punt, but a 30-yard return. And special teams are starting to hurt Auburn, starting to wear them down a little bit. Michael Greer on the return. He just hits this opening. There's a missed tackle. And Georgia inside the 50-yard line with 8.45 to go. Check in with Adrian Carsten on the sideline. Adrian, quick note about the additional 15 minutes this season that Jim Donovan has placed in about the special teams. That may have made the difference right there. Yep, you're right. Option play. Pitches it back to Edwards. And he will be tackled in the open field by Patcher for a loss of four yards. What Adrian was talking about is they were so poor, Georgia, last year on special teams. That Jim Don had added 15 minutes every practice to try to improve the special teams. Here's the option play and the excellent tackle by Larry Casher. Well, that quieted the crowd a little bit here as uh, Georgia had something going, still do for that matter, but it's second down at about 14. We got Martavius Houston on Heinz Ward right now. Bobo's pass, right over the middle, has it complete, that's Champ Bailey, all the way to the 30-yard line, first down Georgia Bulldogs, good for 22, Mike Bobo looking like he did in the first series of the game, very accurate, good pass, Champ Bailey on the in route, Larry Casher lets him go, safety too deep, Ricky Neal not in the zone to cover, Cam Bailey. 20 of 30 for Bobo tonight. There's the pass to Edwards. Waits for his blockers. Puts a head down, and that's a nice job by Auburn, actually, because they had the three blockers right there. 
and it's only a gain of five. Again, let's go to Mike Tirico. Michael? Ron, quite a night in Albuquerque, New Mexico. New Mexico beat BYU on the deuce. Graham Lee to Milton Thomas here. The win sets off a wild celebration, and if New Mexico beats a poor Tulsa team, New Mexico will be in the WAC title game. I know that Rudy Davalos is sitting there excited, but uh, not excited to see his goalpost go down at that new facility. But his pass got it complete, and boy, he took a chance. He got it in between two defenders. Allen made the catch. But Corey Allen came back to the ball, and that's the key on it. You hear everybody talk about wide receivers coming back to the football, and that's exactly what Corey Allen does here. He came back to the ball and made that catch in front of Houston and Casher. Clock is running. Six minutes, 59 seconds left in our ball game. It is first down, Georgia. They have the ball just inside the Auburn 20-yard line. Pittsburgh goes to Edwards. Cuts it up. Hit from behind, and I believe it's Spikes who grabs a hold of him. Yep, it is. Reese was in the area, but Spikes got him. And it's a very short game, down to around the 16. A lot of time yet for Georgia. A lot of time. Three timeouts left. They got 625. Akeel Spikes now with 10 tackles in the game. Bubble gets his pass out in the flat. Edwards breaks one tackle close to the first down on that second effort as Spikes makes still another tackle. I don't know how many tackles Takeo Spikes has, but he made a big one right there. That should on Robert be, Edwards. Should be 11 for him, right? With the ball out in the corner to Robert Edwards. There's a Larry Casher sliding by, but to Keo Spikes again. And his tackles have been wrap-up tackles. Third down and short. Edwards left side has the first down and then gets driven back by Spikes. Uh, give him 12 tackles, and now he has six solo. Well, they, they, they're not going to talk about the football game they were at last week. There's not any talk going on. But you talk about a great tackle, picture-perfect tackle. This play on Robert Edwards, number 55, just greets him in that hole and drives him backwards. But beyond the hip, it is first and goal. Pass to the end zone. It is caught. Touchdown, Heinz Ward. Got to go for two here. Now the kicker was starting out, but uh, it's a two-point situation. Mike Bobo coming to the sidelines to get it from Jim Donna. Now you always go in the game, Ron, with two or three two-point plays. Bobo hustling back in the field because the play clock is at 16 right now. Mike Bobo just... Throwing that ball right in the hole to Heinz Ward. Heinz Ward, five catches, 75 yards, and two touchdowns tonight. But the end zone tipped away, and getting ahead, and there was Larry Casher to knock it away as it was intended for Corey Allen. Now you've got to get ready if you're Auburn for the onside kick because you figure it's coming with 5.33. So it's a 10-point ball game with 5.33 left to play. We'll be right back point game 38 to 28 and as uh, we looked out in the parking lot there I think maybe some of those people coming back you know what's on this young man's mind Hep Hines who missed wide right with the field goal earlier in this ball game boy if he had hit that 38 yarder we'd have a one touchdown football game Ron this is going to be an important onside kick for Georgia now this is Mark Johnson who will handle the onside kick And it is recovered by the Auburn Tigers at the 43. That's Fred Beasley, part of the Goods Hands team. And he's been big tonight. And that was a big play. Nothing automatic about the onside kick recovering it. You can't wait for it, Ron. You got to go get it. Fred Beasley made that decision. Now they're looking at the situation. Auburn with one timeout. They don't want any, actually. Georgia has all three. And the thing that the Tigers want right here is to be able to run the ball 
a few times, moved the chains, and let that clock run on down the road. Carter to the outside, and he will have the first down. Now, he did run out of bounds. Bailey pushed him out, but he also was about to turn the corner for six points. He shows you some quick, darting moves here. And he shows his quickness because he was starting up the line of scrimmage, stopped on a dime, and then broke it outside and showed his speed. Devontre Carter, true freshman out of Pensacola, Florida, 5'11", 174. They were going to try to redshirt him this year, but the running game went uh, backwards, so they figured they needed him in as a spark. Bud Beasley. Straight ahead with the carry. He'll take the seat, moves the pile. That's good for about three, maybe four yards on the play. And all of a sudden, the clock is about to go under five minutes left in this one. Jim Donnan is telling his ball club to get up as fast as you can. Terry Bowden on the other side saying, lay down. Stay as long as you can on the ground. Now look at this. For the season, 75.6 yards a game tonight, 148 on the ground 109th going into the day today's ball game out of 112 division one teams brother oliver's club has done a good job of shutting them down running as well Carter gets to the left side he's loose cuts back in toward the sideline at the 10 yard line it'll be first down auburn tigers as ronald bailey prevented a touchdown got another nice block by fred beasley in that offensive line Opening up holes here late in the ball game. Fred Beasley, number 23, is going to start block on Greg Bright. There's a nice block by number 71, I believe. It's Colin Sears. Mike, he just glides. Yeah, he, I mean, he, he is quick. God-given talent and just glides. That time sliding to the outside. He's really, he makes a lot of folks miss. He can scoot. He can change directions. First down, they actually can pick up a first down without scoring. About to go into four minutes left in our game. He gets it again. Carter to the left side, spinning inside the five. He's down to the four, now the three. Smart and Bailey combining in the stop. But on this drive, DeMontre Carter has proven that he can hold on to the ball and that he is the next generation of good running backs at Auburn. And give credit to Geno James. The left tackle, T.J. Mears, the left guard, T.J. Dunnigan, the center, Demarcus Curry, who's had a great night, the right guard, Victor Riley. Oh, look at all the pats for Carter on the sideline. Career high, those numbers you saw on him, of 94 yards. And now Auburn's not in a hurry to do anything. They don't dare want to get a penalty, but they come slowly to the line of scrimmage. Short yardage set right up the middle, and no signal. Did not get in at the one-foot line. They're looking for the football, but Brandon Miller has it, number 51. Yeah, Brandon ran back up the field. Yeah, they're looking down the bottom of the pile. Back on the 10-yard line. No ball there. <laughs> there it is. Brandon Miller came out with it. So they did pick up the first down. That's the most important thing right now. I'd come back to the same play or quarterback sneak by Damian Craig. Take as much of the 25 seconds as you can take. Fred Beasley looks like he can stretch it out pretty well on the same play or Damian Craig quarterback sneak. Then don't take it off the line of scrimmage. Mike Love, 73. Kendall Simmons, who weighs 321, lined up in the backfield as a blocker. Straight ahead with the play. They did not get in. But I'm not sure anybody from Auburn's overly concerned because no, that was first down. Yeah, that's not bad. It takes another 25 seconds. Not a lot of movement in there. I mentioned Kendall Simmons. They have him in as a blocker. Actually, Kendall went into the back of his quarterback. I'm not sure that's what they want him <laughs> no, to do. No, he's going to... The best hit on Damian Craig tonight has been by Kendall Simmons. <laughs> I think you give it to Fred Beasley here. George is going to take a time, one of those three timeouts. They stop the clock with two minutes and 34 seconds left in the ball game, and we'll take it with them. Auburn with a 10-point lead and knocking on the door again. Four. Spikes, 13 tackles as he gets a rest on that uh, bench along with the other defenders for Auburn. Time is back in. Craig hands it. Beasley, touchdown Auburn. Hey, what 
thoughts on those young men's mind right now, Ron, is Alabama. Their thoughts are quickly changed now to the big one next week. Good luck to Kendall Simmons, who uh, is in there to block on that play again. Damon Jared Craig, Holmes. Damon Sorry. Craig was glad he didn't hit him on that play. Holmes with the extra point. Good pass, and he splits him. So the new score, Auburn 45, Georgia 28, with two minutes and 31 seconds left in the ballgame. Fred Beasley has a way of just hurtling up in the air and crossing that plane. Look how high he gets. Not a lot of movement by that offensive line, but a good job not letting any penetration. Fred, Fred's going to kind of, he's hitting Dustin Luke, lucky there, but uh, those are love taps. Well, still a couple of great weeks of college football yet to see this season. You can see all the best games right in your own home when you call in and order the ESPN game plan on pay-per-view. 1195 gets you up to 10 extra games which aren't normally available in your area. So call your local cable operator or direct TV and ask for the ESPN game plan next week. Speaking of next week, we'd like for you to be along with us as we are down on the plane, Auburn, Alabama, for the regular Iron Bowl matchup. It'll be the 62nd meeting between Auburn and Alabama. Hines Ward loses it and picked up by his teammate. That's uh, Bailey. And Bailey will bring it out across the 20. Uh, Ron, you, you don't want to lose of what George has done this year. The beaten Florida and uh, Jim Donnan has got his ball club uh, in great shape. Got a lot of good senior class. But he has started uh, this this program now, and I think it's too bad when a team loses. It diminishes, uh, doesn't to me, what they've accomplished throughout the year because they've had a good year. I don't think there's any question about that. Disappointment here tonight for a number of reasons as the pass, Bailey tipped and almost picked off. They wanted to keep it going to go to 9-1, and one, possibly finish 10-1, and one, and have an opportunity, you know, this could be a $8 million plus football game for them, but uh, that's gone now. And of course, that means that the Southeastern Conference, for all intents and purposes, would only have one team in the alliance. And, and a disappointing day for the, the other West teams who were hoping that Auburn would lose, LSU losing to Notre Dame, but also seeing this game where Auburn is keeping the track of and heading for that playoff game if they can win one more next week. Complete. That's Hines Ward. Flag is thrown. Check the flag that is down at the 24. An eligible receiver downfield. An lineman or a wide receiver covered up another wide receiver. Here are the standings in the West. LSU five and two. Then uh, Auburn, Mississippi State, four and two. They uh, had an impressive win today. All this at three and three. Then Alabama and Arkansas. And of course, what Mike's talking about, the uh, LSU drops to seven and three with that uh, thumping by Notre Dame today. Terry Bowden and his guys have to be very, very pleased. And in fact, this is where you really have to salute not just the players, but particularly the coaching staff for doing such an outstanding job with that extra week and getting them ready. Now, let, let, you're, you're right. I mean, that that they benefited from that. But let's go back to we'll go back to the playoff picture of the uh, after this play. Pass is caught by Hines Ward. He held on to it, and it's enough for the first down out at the 34. Now, there's still a lot of football to be played, but if if Auburn wins out, the Mississippi State wins out, who goes to the playoff game? Mississippi State. Okay, so they, uh, Auburn has to beat Alabama, and uh, Mississippi State has to beat Ole Miss. Well, they're going to scramble out of it. 
40 and to the 42-yard line. Antoine Nolan is there to meet him. It's going to be a gain of close to nine. And well, they got some hedges. Hey, Florida State last week, it was a side game. This is a hedge game for, uh, for Auburn. Bobo's pass is caught. That's Brown in Auburn territory at the 35. When Mike Bobo stood in there and under good pressure from Ricky Neal on that last play. Martavius Houston is shaken up. There's the pressure on Mike Bobo from number 50, Ricky Neal. To Keo Spikes giving great effort but just couldn't reach the ball. Larry Brown with the with the completion. You can see what happened. Uh, Martavis Houston, uh, the headgear yeah. of one of his uh, teammates. Caught his, caught his hand. Caught his hand, and that's what uh, the stoppage in play is over. He went down immediately holding that hand. i tell you what, temperature is uh, supposed to be down into the 20s right now, which I wouldn't argue with, at least the low 30s, and it, that really would sting on those, uh, on those fingers taking a headgear direct hit. But he's up and running off the field. That's good news. He's had a whale of a ball game. Well, he has. Nine tackles for Martavius Houston in this ball game tonight. Clock is running again. 50 down to 49 and 48. So the string by Georgia is about to end. This is amazing since this series moved from Columbus. As you see this pass for the end zone, Bailey had it knocked away at the last moment. Nolan on the cover. Is the fact that Auburn, since they moved the series from uh, Columbus, they have a winning record here in Athens. Well, I think now they would win uh, seven of their last eight games here. That's, that's exactly right. Good coverage by Antoine Nolan. You know, Kinda I punching the ball out. Somebody made the point. They said, you know, this is taking hospitality to your uh, your visitors a little too far. Now the hedge. <laughs> now part of the uh, headdress of the Auburn Tigers as the clock is stopped at 34 seconds. Bobo on second down over the middle. And that ball, uh, I believe, tipped at the line of scrimmage. I'm not too sure that Dorsey didn't get a hand on it. Tonight's Visa players of the game are from Auburn, Takeo Spikes, 13 tackles, eight of those solo. And from Georgia, Mike Bobo, 333 yards passing and three touchdowns. And as part of their continuing effort to further the development of amateur athletics, Visa, proud to donate $1,000 on behalf of these two athletes to their school's general scholarship fund. Bobo's third down pass. Robert Edwards will not make it to the 25, so it's going to be fourth down as Spikes and Reese combine on the tackle. And the clock is stopped with 20 ticks left on it. And a timeout has been called by the Georgia Bulldogs. So let's take a timeout with them. 45-28. We'll come back and close this one out. A moment ago that... Uh, Next Saturday, the 62nd meeting between Auburn and Alabama will be there. 7.30 Eastern Time. The game will be played in Auburn. Fourth down. George on fourth down. Moves the pocket. They throw it complete. Hines Ward will have the first down and come out of bounds at the 19. So 15 seconds left. Boy, the way this one started tonight, what it was like a house of fire. Georgia took the ball, went right down the field. And Terry Bowden standing there. Certainly the policeman was not helping decoy him, do you think? No, but he wasn't going to take the bullet for him either. I tell you, Terry doesn't mind that cold bath right there. But Georgia took the ball right down the field and scored. And this 86,000 just went crazy. But then Auburn, the next four possessions, scored. Three touchdowns and a field goal. And that set the tone. One that Georgia could never catch up with. Corey Allen stays in the field to play. He's at the five-yard line. It's enough for the first down, so they'll stop the clock just long enough to move the change unless Georgia uses the final one. They took the last one. So they'll stop it with eight seconds left. 
Rami, you talked about the Auburn Alabama game last uh, next week. A chance for Alabama to finish this season off on the right note. Well, on the coaches poll in the top ten, you see uh, everybody won who was active today, with the exception of Georgia. And uh, they're going to topple out of that top ten with uh, this 17-point loss here at home tonight. Carolina with a good come-from-behind win on the road at Clemson. Yeah, a big win for Mac Brown. A, a good coaching job to bring the team back from that loss last week. And I don't think Florida State will move there. I don't think Michigan and Nebraska scoring 77. They're not going anywhere. Coming up next, the Residenton College Football Scoreboard. You look at Damian Craig with an outstanding night. Not just what he did on the field, but the, his leadership abilities. Well, he was he was truly outstanding. Bobo still looking, lobs his pass, throws it away with three seconds showing on the clock. So we'll have one more play. Perry finally getting a smile on his face, and, uh, and he should. <laughs> nice story today on his mom on game day and about her husband and the two sons active in uh, Division I. Nice story. Nice one on the family. This is the 11th play of the drive, and they go with the running play, and Edwards would score as the horn sounds. <laughs> officials say this one is history. The point does not have to be kicked. So, final score. Auburn 45 and Georgia 34. Stay tuned. The Residence Inn scoreboard is coming up next. And don't forget, next Saturday, join us for the greatest rivalry in all of sports, Alabama at Auburn. Next Saturday, 7.30 Eastern. For Mike Godfrey to Adrian Carson and our entire ESPN crew, i Ron Franklin. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Now let's join Mike Tirico.